<laughs> yeah, am I coming through audio? Like, volume-wise, am I coming through okay? Because I'm trying to keep my voice down. Yeah, yeah you seem to be, yeah. That's fine, then. It's um, Skype gives you a bit of a boost when you start hit recording somewhere, I've noticed. Oh, that's, that's um, fine. Strangely, and then when you don't record, it seems to drop it a bit. I don't know why it does that, but... Weird. So. But I've actually got my um, pop filter <laughs> attached, so... Yeah. So I don't know if that makes any difference. Just try, just say like P and B, just uh, emphasize the P and B, because that's not what pop filters are for. P. B. Yeah, so yeah, that seems all right. Oh, good. I've got attached using an old uh, coat, coat hanger wanger. Why? <laughs> Why coat hanger? <laughs> you mean... The good old back alley abortion. Absolutely. <laughs> Jesus. Freshly recycled. Uh, am I coming through all right? Yeah, Hi. yeah, seems to be. Beautiful. I've got that mic. I'm like five inches away from the mic, so. You can see my mic. Yeah. Mine's, mine's over here. Just hold on a second. <laughs> um, I'll have to send this via Facebook. Send it, bitch. There we go. Send it, bitch. Oh. Ah, cool. You in? Oh no, you're on the couch. I thought you were in bed then. Oh no. <laughs> I'm on the couch. The Lewis and Coxie have done podcasts in bed, so. So have I, actually, yeah. Yeah. I've done a podcast from the toilet, so. So have I, funny enough. And, and your bathtub. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Coxie. When can you... Yarp. You ready? Wait, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm rolling the right one. So, uh, yeah, A Trade and Big Show first, isn't it? Yay. <laughs> I've got a big problem with the end of this match, by the way. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> I have, have a big a, problem. I have a, Garbage. I, have a, I, have a, I have a big problem with the match in general, but. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, right, so because we're doing six matches. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's. It'll be. I don't know if. Bunkle, can you say the streak? Because it'll be uh, edge. Will, the edge will finish on Paul, won't it? So because it's six will. names. So oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then me do the, then I'll do the the, the streak. Yeah, the streak. <coughs> you bitch. You <laughs> bitch. I thought Lottie said that the other day. I was walking down the street and I swear to God, she went, "You bitch." I was like, "I'm sorry, what?" <laughs> 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 You're one. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it now. <laughs> so like, Ruby randomly came out with fuck before because someone shouted at what the fuck are you doing? Right next to us on the pathway on George Bancroft Park. I thought classy. Thanks yeah. for that. Yeah. I thought you fucking So Ruby's like, oh fuck. I was like, don't say that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause she's like she's like a little bleeding sponge, isn't she? So Yeah. They're they're that, age, are, that is, yeah. Well, we found out today she's she's the youngest one in the building because her birthday's like the 26th of August, so she's three. Yeah, yeah. And she's at a higher level than some year ones. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so potentially she's further ahead than some six-year-olds. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm a little bit... Impressed, but also scared that she's going to become like some mad scientist or something. Oh, for some reason, I thought you'd say I'm sceptical she's not mine. <laughs> With my intelligence, Jesus. yes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jeez, even Steve wouldn't say that, Christ. <laughs> it was just a, a floating thought. I was like... <laughs> oh, that's like Steve's friend from the podcast. He was floating for a while, wasn't he? Oh, uh... Johnny, yeah, yeah, yeah. He randomly came back and then died instantly. 
Oh, 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 I hope you mention. I hope when we when Steve meets up again, you you randomly mention uh, mention Johnny. They go who? Well, it might happen. <laughs> I don't know when it is. I don't know when he's coming back. So, to be fair, not oh, a wee. Oh, so I'm just waiting for the one shot of uh, Bungle to introduce Dick Fate. Yes. <laughs> and, well, how did da- he co- and how did he get the name Dick Fate? His imaginary friend told him that was his name. Yes. <laughs> Does his imaginary is his imaginary friend a brawling buddy? I, to be fair, I, I'm yet to decide what oh, his imaginary oh, friend oh, is going to be. Oh, oh, oh! That's what you've got to do. You stick fate, and he's got like a keepsake. It's a straw doll that he punches. That could that could work. Yeah, like a straw voodoo doll. Yes. It, it, dep- it, dep- it depends how I roll. Because if I roll one really bad stat, that is going to be his intelligence because it's a dump stat for his character type. So but if I get like a free, then that, w- that would fit in. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping... I've never hoped to roll roll really shit, but this time I kind of do. I kind of want to roll a free. <laughs> yeah. Just for his intelligence. Intelligence is free, and then... I mean, is, this a, is this a backup character, by the way? Uh, Cookson wants to do a one-shot um, that will be in the same world as the main campaign, but um, set two years earlier. Oh, like a prequel? Yeah, yeah. And just, yeah. just like a little brief, like, two or three episodes, at, you know. Um, but So he's asked us to do characters for it, so we, we were all trying out Something a bit different, really. Ah, oh, fair so, enough. Yeah, so I thought it was probably a decent time to break out Dick Fate. And uh, yes, with his imaginary gay friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me! Your soul get removed for yeah. iTunes. You look way too <laughs> proud of yourself for that. Oh, we for, we ain't going off iTunes. Well, they might, but <laughs> we won't get removed from iTunes. I'm not, yeah. I didn't say he was going to make fun of his imaginary gay friend. He's just going to have an imaginary gay black friend. That he punches. Well, he can't punch you because he's imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying it to sound... come up with a... Go on. I was going to say, this sounds like the bit you just had into. There's like, yeah, he's got an imaginary, an imaginary gay friend. And then it went to, he's got an imaginary gay black friend. <laughs> then it's going to be, he's got an imaginary, he's got an imaginary gay black friend. He's also a midget. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they keep adding to it. It's an imaginary gay friend that identifies with a panda who's also black. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That yeah, gets but... angry when you assume it's gender. <laughs> well, it's its friend currently has a first name. I haven't come up with a second name for him yet, though. I'm going to call him Montez something. I don't know why. Probably so I can call him Monty in cuddly moments. I thought it would be female, call it Shaniqua or something, go proper racial. Oh, absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not running the risk of that. <laughs> no, I did get the name Montez from Montez Ford from the uh, wait, wait. Street Profits. <laughs> wait. He doesn't want to risk the racial thing, but he's going with a black gay imaginary friend. I have to okay this with Cookson first, like. <laughs> That ain't fucking happening. As I sit here with a cowboy hat on. <laughs> oh, fuck it, that's oh, it. Dear. So many Donald Trump jokes there. I'm not going to go near that with a barge pole. <laughs> Just grab him by the pussy. <laughs> God. Heard an amazing joke before. I don't know why I started laughing, but I was absolutely wetting myself. It's one of the proper really bad dad jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it says, how do dinosaurs pay their bills? Well, try, we, we try checks. Jesus. Yeah. Don't know why I saw, I found that absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so that scene out of, um, you ever seen the original, um, oh, what the fuck's it called? Um, shooting stars where someone says a joke and then the tumbleweed goes across, it just goes deadly quiet. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what just happened. 
Right, shall we begin? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So, um, I'll start with A-Train and Big Show. Uh, Bunkley, you've got Kane. Paul, got... you've got Orton. And then I've got Mark Henry. Bunkley, you've got Batista. And then Paul, you've got Edge. All right. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> four seconds, yeah. Uh, four or five. All right. Probably, probably go four. Go so four. Four was that the magic number last time? So. Four Mississippis. So eight. Uh, three, two, one. A train and the big show. Kane. Randy Orton. Mark Henry. The Animal Batista. Rated R Superstar Edge. The Streak. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to week three of our road to WrestleMania. Woo, WrestleMania, baby. <laughs> we still need a rage party. Yes, we do. Just not at midnight. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have enough energy drinks to get me through this. Oh, no one does. No. <laughs> so, yes, welcome to week three. I am, of course, your host, Coxie, joined once again by the baddest man, the baddest man, the baddest man in professional wrestling. Science Heal delivered. Your boy and mine. A dazzler amongst men. <laughs> Moral of the story, don't meet your heroes. <laughs> Especially when they're called Dick Fate. It's Billy the Boy Bunkle. How are we doing? I'm surprised Bunkle's not upset after that statement because he had two heroes, now he has none. He, he always has a Lex Express. This is true. Okay, maybe he has one left. And the other voice you can hear, he is a man who is half, half a, a man. man. Oh, on time this time. Yeah. It's Paul, the fat guy, Flinders. It is. It's me. It's me. It's TFG. I'm not the flaming grill no more. <laughs> you could call me the, the slimming world to the TSW. Why not? <laughs> I have a tuxedo to fit into. The, the, sl- the slim woman. The slim woman, yes. The slim yes. woman. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, well, it's International Women's Day when we're uh, recording this, so... And it's 2019, so I can assume whatever gender I like. Yep. <laughs> it, it, it Technically, it's not, because it's the day after International Women's Day now. Oh, yeah, by five minutes. Oh, we'll fuck that up. So it is, so fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well. So, <laughs> oh, she's like, I could, we could cut it in post. He won't. No, he won't. He, just, he won't. He, he won't. He's, cook, he's like Cookson, he just doesn't edit. <laughs> Have fact, faith. Cookson edits everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going by a statement he said on air once. <laughs> Have, Have faith in my ability. It's not, it's not a lack of ability, it's a lack of work ethic. <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> That's me. Don't don't judge my work ethic. Uncle Uncle, why do you think I record as live? Well <laughs> it means no editing. <laughs> I'm giving the secrets away, aren't I here? Yeah, you're just shit shitting on the magic. <laughs> ah well. So of course, on part three, we're going to take you through from number 11 to number 16. Yeah, fairly mixed bag, this lot. It's, it's not. It's like a fucking packet of meat. You get 20 quid off Andy the Meat Man. <laughs> it's, get... all, it's all the same shit, and then there's like one good bit. Well, yeah, to be fair, it's not quite as good as the last five that we did, but it's not bad. Is the way I looked at it. 
It's certainly it not starts, one to five. No, it's not one to five, Brad. Come on. Well, we'll we'll see about that. <laughs> so, first of all, we're going to journey back to Mar- the 30th of March, 2003, in Seattle, Washington, to WrestleMania 19. It's A Train and the Big Show in a handicap match against The Undertaker. Yeah, which is the only handicap match Taker has at WrestleMania, and also the last Mania is Badass Taker. Oh. In which this, this is also meant to be a, a tag team match originally, wasn't it? It was. Yes. Um, it was, because the, his tag team partner was supposed to be Nathan Jones, but they basically, you know, were scared shitless that he was green as goose shit going into WrestleMania, and you thought, fuck it, we'll take him out on heat. Yeah, to be fair, it was it was quite annoying because they spent a lot of time bigging him up. Mm. Only I, t- I understand why they did because they did it for the, the it's the size, isn't it? It's the size of the Absolutely. guy. Absolutely, but oh, they, yeah. yeah, but you know, you know, you it, things are bad when you're outsmarted by fucking Nunzio. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a little bit of like a you know a promo package sort of thing, sort of replay of earlier what happened in the night on Heat. And you see Nunzio walking out the changing rooms, and well, next thing it, there's a couple of other guys there. It was, it was, it was the, it was the whole FBI, wasn't it? It was, but it was Nunzio that got him to follow him, yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah, okay, so yeah, you don't look great now, mate. Um, yeah. Nathan Jones gets jumped by some jobbers and actually gets his ass kicked. What? He's supposed yeah. to be the Undertaker's tag team partner. God damn it! Player. So, so, yeah, and it's also the placement in the card as well. Basically, Taker was almost curtain jerking. He was only beaten to it by Matt Hardy <laughs> and Rey Mysterio. Doesn't it happen a couple more times, I think, in this uh, segment? Possibly. Like, uh, the streak matches. I'm sure there's other, other matches where he's on early as well. Mm, I think this is possibly um, around about the time when probably Taker was part, possibly the lowest on the card in his career at this point. Arguably. So. so. Um, but yes, we, first of all, we have uh, The Fink. It introduces WWE's favourite band in the whole world, Limp Biscuit. Well, everyone knows they, how tone deaf the WWE universe can be, so. <laughs> well, they, they chime in with Rolling, uh, which plays for a fair while. It does. Uh, ew, it goes on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Taker comes out pretty much at the end of the song. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they have a concert and then he pretty much just comes... He may as well come out to his own music. Which is... Like that. Well, so to be fair, it is his own music at the time. That was a stupid statement, but <laughs> you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you mean you mean the the the, the bells and whatever. What the bells, is it? Organ. Organ. The yeah. organ, I but fuck it. Um, just yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. And well, the less say, the less we say about the big show and Albert, the better, because I have no idea how they became a tag team, why they were a tag team, why yeah. I should care. Well, this is it. <laughs> Evidently, no one cared because when Big Show and A Train came out, it was fucking crickets. Yeah, absolute crickets. No one gave a fuck about this match. They gave a fuck about CE Taker. They gave yeah. a fuck about his entrance. After that, crickets. Absolute crickets. Can you blame them? I mean, there's the Big Slow, who is one of the worst wrestlers I've ever seen in my life and needs to apologise for his entire career. And Albert, who, what, well, other than shave your back chances, never done anything in this business and never drew a dime anywhere. No, not in WWE at least anyway, but still. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm struggling. To, because of the, they were all trying to push tra- a trade at this point, weren't they? they were like he had a bit, just recently had a gimmick tra- change from Albert to a train, And I never got the... I never got... I mean, obviously, I didn't watch WWE back then, but obviously, I've gone back and I've watched a few bits and bobs. Um, and I've never got the A-Train hype. I never... It's 
he's just another ra- another generic big man. It, he was just another generic big man. They just mm. it, it's it's interesting to see how they because like in the last couple of pay per views with the flare match and the Triple H match, he's been rel- Taker's been relatively high up the card, working with slightly smaller guys. Than, well, smaller guys compared to him, especially, and seems to have pulled out like some really good matches. Mm. And then now he's fallen down the card a bit. It's like, uh, what do we do with him? Oh, just put him against two big guys. This is it. It's going back to WrestleMania, the first, his first WrestleMania, well, well, second, let's say, where it's, oh, well, face this guy because he's taller than you. Yeah, you know it's, just, I mean? it's, it's just an excuse to get him on the card. Yeah, go back to, you know, oh, well, it's impressive because they're bigger than him. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's... Size doesn't automatically mean you're an underdog. In WWE sense, it does, but yeah, you don't get you don't tend to get a ma- a, a, a jobber who's big unless your name's um, Titus O'Neil. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But yeah, it's they it, 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 like like we've said on pod. Well, I've said on pod. You know, Vince McMahon has a massive erection for he big wrestlers. And that's gonna, he's that's just going to carry on till the day he dies. So we're not shocked about this. No, no, I don't know. I know we shouldn't be shocked by it, but it was just it was just one of them. It was quite interesting that he falls down the card, and it's like uh, we don't, you know, we don't know what to do. Let's just put him against bigger guys and call him an underdog again. Yeah, which Taker is never an underdog. No, never. But yeah. Going into the match, um, they tried to double cross him at the beginning and fails. Uh, yeah, Big Show tried a sneak attack and it fails because he's too too big to sneak up on anyone. Yeah, he just it's yeah. And el- you, this is why you don't have it's, elephants just ninjas. It doesn't it's work. A, it's akin to um, <laughs> what was that? Was it last year, year before the pay per view where Kane was doing like a running and the camera cuts round to like the one well, the announce table and Kane's there sort of. Punched over, waiting oh, for his cue. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! It was. It was it not the rumble where he uh, eliminates somebody from. He was already been eliminated, but then he eliminates somebody else by dragging him over the top rope. Can't remember which one it was. Everybody went mental about it. It, it was that, but I, I thought it was an actual match where we had meant to have done like a running. Oh, and I he don't. just he was just sort of there, and everyone's like, he that shouldn't have been seen. <laughs> yeah, like. So, um, yeah, so sneak attacks, A train takes a choke slam. Uh, the events they get down to the whole tag team format because it's a two on one. I was gonna say that choke slam goes for a two count, and show has to save the match. That's like 10 yeah. seconds in. Just remember this, by the way, you just said it goes, <laughs> it, it goes to a regular tag team match. Just remember that when we get to something later on. Yeah. Because there's a massive problem with this match. Huge problem. And it's not the big chopper ones. No, it's not. There's a um, huge problem. So take a count as a choke slam into a Fujiwara. Yeah. Um, then randomly applies an arm bar as well, which looked really weird. Yeah. Well, you don't. You don't. You, <clears throat> Taker's always looked weird doing submissions to me. It's a guy that size, you know. It, well, how, how late did it take him to introduce the you know the Hell's Gate that actually kind of fits? But that doesn't come along until like what are we on now? We're on nineteen now. So the time when it actually. Well, I so, think it's Edge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 20, so that's 24, so we're still four years away from the Hell's Gate making, in, you know, an appearance. So it kind of fits his character, in a way, just, well, the name itself, but it's, it's some, it's some, some, it just looks, it's a bullshit move, we know that, but mm. in a way, because of the way it's applied, it makes sense, whereas you don't see... Taker as some sort of MMA style 
I'm going to put you in a fucking Fujiwara armbar kind of like wrestler. You see him as a striker, as a power move wrestler, as an agile wrestler, not a submission specialist. I say, it's even, I mean, at this time where he's the American badass, I'd, he's a brawler, really. Well, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a basically a big version of Steve Austin. Yeah. That's the this, way that I see him. It was around this point when he started, well, about a year, a year or so earlier when he started doing the whole, like, the dragon sleep and all that sort of thing as well. Yeah, so. the dragon sleeper, that was never one for me either, really. So he, does it, he does it to Arne Anderson. He does it to Arne Anderson uh, in the Flair feud. But again, like, I don't know, he just, Taker doing submissions just doesn't look right. He should, you know, I know every now and again, against Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin would break out the Million Dollar Dream, but he was trained by the Million Dollar Man. Yeah. You know, so it kept, well, at least in, in storyline. So that made sense. Taker pulling out submissions is because, oh, well, Taker decided that he wanted to do it this match. Mm. It's like, it, it's almost like somebody went to him, you know, old school, where you, you know, work the arm. You ever notice that you never do any other move to the arm in any <laughs> match you're ever in? <laughs> Oh, shit, yeah, that doesn't really fit psychology, does it? No, it, it doesn't. Why do you do it, you dumbass? Mm. And he went, yeah, you know what? Armbar, bitches. Armbar. <laughs> thousand moves of doom. How many moves my armbar is? 800. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Taker basically copies um, the first part of Jericho's move of Zoom, so... And then we'll somehow end up in a an abdominal stretch war. Ugh. Why? Ugh. Yeah, abdominal stretch. That move that completely breaks kayfabe. Yeah. <laughs> it's just meh. I'm not like I said, I'm not I don't not think this match at all. No. I didn't I mean there was a nice huge clothesline for the A train, but other than that there's not a lot to go on here. Like, it, it's paint by numbers mm. with, with odd rest holds. And like, like doing the abdominal stretch, it's odd for guys this big to be doing that. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather forget how long the match needs to go. Yeah. Take all your rest holds, pop them off, make the match two minutes shorter and have the comeback spot as an actual comeback spot, like fighting back out of a corner or something. You yeah. know what I mean? The idea is to try and get the crowd into it a bit more. Well, the crowd does not give a shit about the big show and Albert. They could not care less who these jabronis are. You yeah, know, They are there to see Taker come out and kick some ass. Let's have a nice five minutes. Taker beats the piss out of them and then pins Albert and we go home happy. Absolutely, but no, you, you've got to have um, all this like shit and, uh, and slaps and things like that. One yeah. thing I will mention, uh, A-Train shouts, you're no big dog. To which Cole mentions his yard. So obviously, you know, the take, Taker eventually comes up with a catchphrase of, this is his yard, sort of thing. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like the first mention of that. I thought it's... A horrible way of sort of like, yeah, trying yeah. to put that over. Yeah, I did. It did not enjoy. No, the th- the thing is, the thing with the whole "it's my yard" gimmick, like, it really it it suited the American badass taker. I like to say, oh, it's my yard or whatever. Yeah, when you agreed. see a guy who's supposed to be an undead creature going. It's my yard. Well, well, you know, technically, are we, do we believe you're alive? Do we believe you're not? Do we believe you have magic powers? Do we believe you don't? It's like, and you're calling something a yard? It's like, mm, you're supposed to kind of be above, like, here's my garden. You know what I mean? It's yeah. my garden. I built this fence. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my graveyard. No, I, I even I don't I don't even mind like now Roman Reigns does the whole it's my yard. Yeah, fine, because he's the big dog. Yeah, that that's fine. I wouldn't be shocked if he had pissed in the ring at one point. Fine, I get it. 
dogs do that. They piss all over the yard. It fucking works. That's it what works. the crowd. So that's what the crowd did to this match. Let's be honest. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Pissed all over it. So, uh, yeah, getting back on track. Uh, a train hits a bicycle kick. Uh, Show hits a choke slam, and then Nathan Jones runs in. Runs in like Leroy Jenkins. Well, he runs in like bloody Charles Robinson, if anything. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like that. It's that bit in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail where you see the guy coming from a distance, and it's like the the drums like, and he doesn't get any closer, or it's just keeps cutting back to the two guards. You say, and the guy's still running, but he's not not got any any closer. <laughs> and it happens about it happens about four or five times, and the, the two guards are there. He just runs past, stabs one of them, and the other one just goes, "Hey!" as he runs past. That's pretty much that's the distance we're going for here. It, well, it, yeah, it was a very it was a very long grab, but it's and what be funny the about from the time because let's be honest, Big Show is not a small man. No. He is a rather tall gentleman. So he would have seen Nathan Jones possibly coming from the ramp. And if that was the case, you would get take her up quick as you can, show stopper the bitch, and free count him before Nathan Jones gets anywhere near the fucking ring. Yep. Yep. But no, this does not happen because wrestling. <laughs> Because take her, don't jump to no bitches. Exactly. <laughs> so Nathan, obviously Nathan Jones comes down, takes out Big Show on his own. You know, Undertaker's been battling this guy for what nearly what ten minutes. Big uh, Show, yeah, bend, a big boot from Jones to A Train, which leads into a tombstone for Taker for the three count. Now, this is where I have a big problem with this match. A huge problem with this match because bear in mind, remember, this is a regular match. Tag Team Rules Handicap Match. Mm. I have written down word for word, and I quote, okay, big problem. It's a handicap match, but otherwise normal rules. So why is this not a disqualification when Nathan Jones attacks not only Big Show, but A-Train in front of the fucking ref? 100% agree. (laughs) Because booking. Yeah. So in, theory, so, in theory, this should be the first loss for The Undertaker at yeah. WrestleMania, thanks to green as goose shit Nathan Jones. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's frustrating because with, the, with these things, it's, it's like wrestling has, the, has these, it has rules, and it has rules for a reason, to give the match a structure. And not only that, sports have rules and we're supposed to be watching yeah. a folk sport. So, you know, it's meant to have some sort of code of conduct. Yeah, but at any point, WWE can just go, oh, yeah, no, I'm just ignoring the rules this time. I'm sorry. Just oh, tell no, no, us no. you're going to ignore the rules. Oh, no, no, referee's discretion, remember. Yeah, but yeah. referee's discretion, bullshit. <laughs> it's, like when, it's like when they lose... And then they point at the Titantron to show that the tights were being pulled, and then they say, "Oh no, no, we're, we're restarting the match from now." Bullshit! Bullshit! Shut up, you whiny bitch of a face! You are no longer a face because you're whining about it like a bitch, like you're a heel, heel. like it's a more, heel. It's more the fact with that that's when they do stuff like that. It's very selective on, on when it happens. It's like oh, yeah. it's it's also like the thirty day um, title defense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be defended at every thirty days, and it only sort of comes in when they want it to. The rematch it, clause is another one. Yeah, well, yeah. They've, they've scrapped the rematch clause now. Yeah, but it used to be a big thing, like where you know oh, we must have rematch because it, it serves us the storyline. But if someone's getting released and needs to drop the title, oh, where's your rematch? Oh, yeah, but oh. I mean, yeah, but I Don't, mean like. Um, like with Lesnar, someone pointed out that uh, sort of it was Bray Wyatt or someone. They're like, oh, they have to defend their title within 30 days. And then, of course, like we went two, three, four months without a defense from Lesnar. And everyone sort yeah. of said, well, where's his like, whole clause on his 30 day title defense or whatever? And he's like, oh, well, Les- Lesnar's a special case. Right. 
And it's like, no, you just you've not thought about it properly. No. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a load of shit, basically what we're saying. Yeah, it is. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. To so... Bear, yeah. <laughs> this match was awful. Awful. Boring. Yeah, it wasn't great. It was not great. <laughs> Just fucking well, boring. Paid by numbers crap. I could have seen that on SmackDown. I could have seen it on Sunday Night Heat. Could have seen, you could have seen that like, ECW December to Dismember. Well, Taker hits the tombstone and gets the win and puts it at 11-0 in 9 minutes and 42. Yay. It felt longer. It did feel longer. A lot longer than that. Um, I give it, I, I, I say out of caskets, so I've given it a 1. I gave it 0. 0.5. Jesus. I mean, it was, I, better, I, it was better than Gonzalez. It was better than Snooker. Well, Snooker got a zero and Gonzalez got a minus five, so um, <laughs> I, I, I'm on. <laughs> I'm, inclined, I'm inclined to go for half as well. Okay. It just, it was just... they, the believability was lost on this match. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah we're, we're going to put Taker in a handicap match at WrestleMania because, you know, he's 10-0. and 0, But we're going to put him against Big Show and A-Train. Yeah, yeah, you're, just, yeah, just he's not losing. Card. Yeah, he's not losing that match, is he? No. So I just put, like I say, the match itself. Because I was expecting the drizzling shit. I mean, like really bad, like, like snooker level. Yeah, shite. yeah. And it wasn't that bad. It was. It was bad. It was bad. If Toto did Africa, but used diarrhea instead of rain. Right, that, okay. that's the level okay. we're going for here. Okay, fair enough, fair right. enough. I blasted but... diarrhea down in Africa. <laughs> the pace at times was okay. At times, might I add. The pace when... But... At, at, the, at the beginning when A-Train and Taker were going right. a bit back and forth, it was okay. And it's then they I mean. quickly settled into rest hold mode. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm getting at. And then it went off a fucking cliff where the, Joe's interference was botched. Yeah. Um, and it fucked the whole rest of the match for me. Um, yeah. And the aftertaste was fucking awful. It, it yeah. just... Yeah, there was, there's nothing special. There's nothing... There's n- there is, it was... It was a throwaway WrestleMania yeah. match and it's yeah. not even memorable. There's nothing. It's not. It was it's... just an excuse to advance the streak. If anything, this is the most throwaway WrestleMania match that Undertaker uh, ever had. And that's even more so than Gonzalez. Because Gonzalez at least has a disqualification finish, which makes it unique. So you possibly want to go and see that. This, it's, oh, not the quality's be- a little bit better than Gonzalez, but it's not memorable. It's not. It's not. You could go to ways that right. Go to watch the streak. Which match can watches? Can I um, not bother watching if you got if you if you restricted on time or something like that? This would be one of them. Yeah, definitely. This would be one that you'd skip at nine minutes. Mm. This would be one you skip. The, the, the one thing the intro was would... better, and that were it. Yeah, the one thing you would say maybe about the Gonzalez taking match again is it's the first time he faces somebody bigger than him. Yeah, there is that. Yeah. So he's super limited, and well, more than super <laughs> limited, he's fucking god awful and a disgrace to this business. But, um, <laughs> but you know, it's it's one of them. It's just don't watch it, skip it. Yeah, don't bother. Yeah, don't bother. There's 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 other things that you can watch. There's more entertaining street matches. If you want some taker, watch something else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't watch it. It's less painful than a knife to the bollocks. Just don't do it. <laughs> watch, watch him single-handedly crush Mohammed Hassan's career at the Great American Batch. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's so, yeah. Well, moving swiftly on, we're going to jump forward to the 14th of March, 2004, in uh, New York City. 
for WrestleMania 20. It's The Undertaker versus Kane. Two. Yeah, it's a second yeah. Kane match. Um, now, in the first episode, I said there was a certain point, about the certain match, where the match wasn't important at all. The match did not matter. This was the one I'm talking about. This is the match I'm talking about. <laughs> the match um, the match was secondary. This was stupid. This was so stupid. Well, first of all, we've got the, it's the return of the dead man. It is. Uh, yeah, because after, after, Kane killed him. Yeah, after burying Taker at Survivor Series the yeah. year before. That's um, right. Taker's entrance takes forever. Oh, and he's got bear about with him. Yeah, yep, he has bear Which, about. Again, this makes no sense because Paul Bearer is Kane's manager. No, he, he he did the whole like, oh well, the Undertaker betrayed me, blah blah blah. So I brought you back your brother Kane, and then he's Kane's manager. No, but now he's managing Taker against Kane. Wait, what? Why? Wrestling. Yeah, I think they were just going for like a WrestleMania 14 feel. Yeah, that's... Like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I will say, the promo actually wasn't that bad. You know, recapping the storyline, as shit as it is. Yeah, the storyline's crap, but the, the, I, I know what you mean. They did, a, they, did a, they did a reasonable job of... Well, they did a good job of explanation and I suppose a reasonable job of putting it over, but... Yeah, retell, like, retell is six months of storyline. It's not. Yeah. It's they it did a reason. Oh uh, yeah, they did a good. I think they did a good job of retelling it personally, but I don't know if I'd be generous. Well, I suppose you, you, they did. They did do a good job. The problem is that it's still not believable. It pushes the boundaries of kayfabe so so hard. But the Undertaker's character from this point on does that. So well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So take us back from the uh, supposed dead, which is why yeah. he's now the dead man. Again. Yeah. May I also point out this is um, Kane comes out first without his mask, and my I add maskless Kane is shit. Yes. <laughs> that was the biggest one of the biggest mistakes they made in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they took his mask off him, and yeah, it was, he, yeah, he just took all the mystique out of the character for me. Yeah. He's supposed to be this burnt and scarred wrestler, but when he got unmasked by RVD, he had a bit of black face paint, and that was about yeah. it. And then a couple of weeks later, he had nothing. Yeah, it was... It's, ama- it's amazing how third-degree birds could wash off in the shower, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it was just... It was so poorly done and they just randomly did it on an episode of Raw as well it was just like shit another like, throwaway yeah Why? a throwaway it like, but it starts a throwaway of like a 10 year gimmick yeah it's supposed to be a momentous a momentous occasion that of like yeah. aiming on mass you know it ended up just being a load of shite uh, you know I think it just got more daft by the fact they had him put the mask back on and had the fake, the fake hair to go with it yeah. yeah, down the line. Yeah, and the in the mask the mask has always seems to have got worse since the very beginning, and like Kate since Kane's kind of got older, like like at the beginning when he came in, it was this unkillable, unstoppable monster, and it took three tombstones to put him down, and he still kicked out right at the end. This is mm. it. The mask now, the modern mask for Kane, it just seems like it's molded to actually look like. <laughs> You know, actually look like the guy wearing it underneath. It's almost as like, do you remember when um, in TNA where Sting had a mask on and it was another Sting mask? It's <laughs> almost like that. It's like the face itself is actually. It's, it's just a, It's molded to be exactly the same as, you know, Glenn Jacobs' face. It's just painted red. <laughs> he yeah, may as well yeah. wear face paint. Yeah, I'm not keen on the new mask. I think when. It might not be this one. It might have been the one, the one kind of before it. I seem to, I seem to remember it, like looking like it had like 
like pipes coming out of it and stuff. I might be thinking of something completely different. But I seem to remember it looking a little bit more... Oh, like... I almost want to say, like, dark. You know, like, now it's just like, oh, it's Kane, he's got a mask on. It looks pretty shit. You know. But, yeah, this unmasked Kane just mm-hmm. looks crap. And what you've got to remember is the remasking of Kane brought us, brought about corporate Kane, and that was even worse. Oh, so... God. <laughs> And that in turn brought us corporate Baron Corbin. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm... there's reasons why I don't watch today's product. That is one of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, jumping into the match, uh, Taker pretty much dominates. Oh, you can't yeah. forget right at the beginning, Kane shouting, "You're not real. You're not I'm, real." I'm and, very and trying to touch yeah. him. <laughs> there's there's the audible when Kane is on like getting some offense in. As he shouts, you shouldn't have come back. <laughs> yeah. And I had to wind it back going, where the fuck said that? And he's like, oh, Kane said it. That was weird. What I do yeah. like... Um... Sorry, go on. I'm say, what I did, what I, what I did like about this in the build-up before the actual anyone touched was um, take Kane selling their disbelief. I really enjoyed it. Oh, it was good. It was good character work and psychology on Kane's part, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's uh... again, it's it's, pu- it's... it's pushing p- kayfabe. Yeah, to a degree, yeah. You yeah. know, you have to suspend your disbelief to what to to you know somewhat to enjoy wrestling. Mm. Yeah, and it. there are limits to that. Did you, a anyone... man who magically can come back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, well, did anyone else notice the similarities to um, the uh, Jimmy Snooker match? Where he basically was no-selling absolutely everything. Taker was yeah. just no-selling everything. I think it, so. it was just that thing for this match, really, because he'd been away for... Five six months, months, five yeah. six months, whatever, and then he's had time to pretty much like reinvent himself as the dead man and all that sort of thing. So it's mm. it's like when he, when he first comes in, it's got you got to have that that factor. At yeah, the end of the day with really, uh, yeah. he did he did similar when he debuted as the American Badass at Judgment Day two thousand or whatever it was. Um, he pretty much like he takes a bit of offense, but he pretty much no sells a lot of shit. Right. Yeah. So, I said there's not too much that actually happens in this match. I mean, Kane gets a bit yes. of shit in. Taker gets a lot of shit in. In a very yeah. brief amount of time. Yeah. It's very much. I found it very much sort of going through the motions. Yeah, yeah I agree. It was. Um, like they've removed the mystique of Kane, like being this invincible monster. Yeah, they pretty much wiped their ass with Kane to get the so, new gimmick of Undertaker over. Yeah, they did. I mean, like, there's there's a there's a bit where they they make the same old mistake, you know. I mean, the getting toward I mean, getting towards the end, really. You know, they're both going for a choke slam. Kane gets the choke slam, which is Kane's finisher. The Tombstone's not his finisher. The choke slam is. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've established this over the years. Starts chatting shit to Paul Bearer, and then is surprised when Taker sits up. I'm sorry, what? Isn't that what Jake Roberts did? Exactly, exactly. It's like, I'm sorry, but you, he's supposed to be his brother. He's supposed, he quite clearly knows he's almost impossible to beat or kill or pin or whatever the fuck he wants to do. Since he buried him alive six months ago and he's come back to life. Yeah. At the end of the day, you've hit a choke slam on him and you think he's down. Are you seriously going to sit there and chat shit to Paul Bearer or are you going to pin the fucker? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's stupid. And then I literally bought take a sits up, clothesline, choke slam to Kane, tombstone, free. Boring. Yes. That's it. Boring. Mm. But like I say, this match was less about the match. 
It was more of the reintroduction of the Undertaker. I get that. I get that mm. idea, and I get that you want to reintroduce him, but is that worth just completely fucking over a WrestleMania match to do? At the end of the day, you could have been reintroduced him and had a decent match between these two, especially if you hadn't have already shit all over Kane for the past mm. ten years. The time of year, though, I think the only place you could have actually. You know, effectively reintroduce the Undertaker in a dead man game. It would be at, say, Royal Rumble, where you know it could, Kane possibly could be in the last two, and Undertaker comes from under the ring or something like that, costs Kane the match somehow. Yeah, anything. Um, but does it doesn't even come out from under the ring. You know, like does what Kane used to do and pulls him through the ring. Well, there is that, yeah. Like he's dragging him back down to hell, which would fit their gimmicks. Mm. Which I think happened in the promo package, didn't it? Uh, I think he comes up through the, like, bursting through the ring. I can't remember mm. him um, pulling him in. I'm not sure. Something happened through the he ring, pu- anyway. He pulls he pulls Diesel in at one point in a cage match. Mm. Uh, Mid-90s, I think. Um... Other than that, I can't remember. But this is um, it. So, yeah. This is like bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, Taker uh, sits up, does some of his signature stuff, and then gets the tombstone in 7.45. Yeah, I've not rated this match at all. So you're, of, giving it a, so, you're giving it zero? I've given it an unrateable. <laughs> because... It, like I say, it's it, the match itself was subservient to the storyline. Yeah, yeah, um, I know what you mean. It the whole thing was there to reintroduce the Undertaker. Um, it may as well have been a segment for all it's worth. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I say, I've not rated the match. That being said. I did enjoy it because Kane's like selling of the disbelief of Kane Undertaker coming back despite what he'd done to him. Yeah. I think it was really good work in that respect. The reaction in the ring was a load of shite, don't get me wrong, but the actual like say the Undertaker coming back, the way it was sold. Yeah, I, th- I think it was done really well. Um, I agree with you that I mean the the storyline was like it is what it is. Yeah, take about take it buried, disappears for six months, just then reappears at Mania, and then his new old gimmick. Um, but how they played it off with Kane acting shocked and that. Was well done. Uh, yeah. Even like the the fact he's en- taking entrance takes nearly six minutes. I'm doing a gun motion on camera so the guys. But <laughs> yeah. You might you might see this on YouTube if I upload it on there later. Um. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Um. The match itself, it would have been if it was like the main year fourteen style match rather than just this. Um. It's like you knew Taker was going over. Because of the the massive comeback that it was built up to be and all that sort of thing, no doubt about it. Um, but the match could have been better. Yeah, yeah, uh, they, I, they, I, they, I can't argue with that. They both can go, especially at this point in two thousand four. And again, for like we had we went from Ric Flair to A Train the Big Show to this. Yeah, it's like a sort of almost sliding scale, which doesn't really pick up until even still, like another couple of matches, another or another three, four matches for me, really. All right, so um, I wouldn't go that far, but we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, it... um, rating, I'll give it a a one point five. Like I say, I've not rated it. I think it was just as bad as A-Train in Big Show. I cared just as much. It was just throw away. 
in ring it was. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a bit conflicted. Do I give it a rating? Because if I did, then if I'm combining the match that I saw with the selling prior to the match, I would give it possibly a one and a half. I'd actually rate it better than the Big Show match. As a total package. Yeah. In ring, in ring, it's it's a point five. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. You know, Kane does a do- Kane does a good job, but so I, I I do understand what you're saying with that, but I, I can't I can't I, in ring action I can't give it any more than a zero point five. That's fair. That's fair. So. Yeah. Um, uh, up next, we're going to travel to the 3rd of April 2005 in Los Angeles, California. It's the legend killer Randy Orton versus The Undertaker. Yeah. Uh, this was the first time Undertaker was like billed in a match that was specifically designed to end the streak. So, and also it's the event where the streak was finally acknowledged as the streak. Mm. Um, this is this is also Raw versus SmackDown. Yeah, it's an interpromotional match, apparently, or interbrand match, whatever they however they build it. Interbrand, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think the term they were using at the time was cross brand. Yeah, cross branded so, match or something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was like like you say as well. It was in the middle of the Randy Orton Legend Killer match, so it made sense that Randy Orton would go for Undertaker at WrestleMania if he's going to end the streak. Because he's ending two things in one in one go. Um, what they also do in the promo as well is they make a really good job of developing the Undertaker's character. Of like WrestleMania is now part of Undertaker's gimmick. Yeah, and. As the years go on, you notice that more and more and more. To the point where it gets basically is his entire character post um, Shawn Michaels too. So yeah. it's it's well yeah they, they, like I said, they do start to acknowledge it more year and year and year. But it's this one I noticed that it's actually the made a conscious effort to let you know that under the, the takers an integral part of WrestleMania and WrestleMania is an integral part of the undertaker. Yeah. Um, well, taker still has a sort of semi uh, what's the word? They keep the K paper alive as he glides to the ring. Yeah, he didn't glide. No, he didn't glide. You're bullshit. Well, in, in K fabe. Yeah, I suppose. Just give me one second. Yeah. I'm going he to needs- move the hamster. What that means is he's uh, going for a wee. <laughs> he is, is that, literally. He is he moving is, a hamster. He is literally moving a hamster. And that hutch, that cage is pretty special. <laughs> it looks like a circus. So, um, I would live in that. I'm short enough. I may actually fit in it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Orton comes out, and the the weirdest thing about this first of all is it's the old Orton. So there's less tattoos. He's the old theme. Yeah, which, which is I really prefer. weird. I prefer the old theme. I think it fits in better. What was it? Uh, Burning My Light, or whatever it was called. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and then there's something mentioned about legends. I don't know if you picked up on this, but apparently they list, they list Rob Van Dam as a legend at this point in 2005. I'm like, are you sure? Because uh, obviously, you know, they're going by the legend killer gimmick and they're rattling off right, the guys, just, yeah. the guys, the guys that Randy Orton's like knocked off. 
And in that bracket of legends of the names that they bring out, like, you know, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and things like that, Rob Van Dam in 2005. Uh... I, I, I didn't think Rob, was, Rob Van Dam was in that, in that league yet in 2005. I wouldn't have said so. No, so I was a little bit confused by that. <laughs> From the Harley races to, to the Ricky Steamboats to the Rob Van Dams. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that shit. Here comes Mungo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was. I, I was like, yeah, Cole, you, you're chatting shit, mate. Yeah, yeah, you're so, crack, um, yeah, yeah, you're cracking shit with shit. So, getting into the match, uh, Taker stalks Orton. And Orton's trying to avoid getting cornered and just chooses to slap Taker in the face. I quite yeah. like that. Yeah, Showing well, a bit of disrespect, isn't it? Yeah. It fits into his character as well as the Legend Killer. Because yeah. the Legend Killer gimmick is basically he just does not respect char- you know, people that have been in the ring before him. Mm. And that fits it perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. But Taker also gets gives basically a bit of disrespect of his own. So I've written in my notes literally as Taker says fuck off to an RKO by dumping Orton to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> that literally is like the fuck off spot, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. He literally like he goes for the RKO and I think I think he just literally just pushes him over the top rope. Yeah, he does, yeah. <laughs> like just fuck off. <laughs> uh, so yeah, take us to the the leg drop, the apron leg drop. Yeah, which is stable. Uh, yeah. Then back, gets him back inside and goes for old school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. But then we have to see Orton in the corner. Take take it goes for a leg drop, misses. And sh- straddles the turnbuckle, goes along the apron where Orton drop kicks Taker and Taker smashes into the barricade head first. Uh, this is the point where Taker starts taking bigger bumps as well. I think he. I think he's. Uh, he's having to bump more. Yeah, yeah. He's having because people aren't buying it. That's no. to me. You know, he's he feels like he's got a he's got to put a bit more of a show on. Yeah, you I know, agree. And, it's that it's that thing really. There's only, especially at this point when he's what, uh, thirteen and oh? Yeah, yeah. And he can't really. There's like there needs to be some believability. Like he can't just be no selling everything. Yeah. Especially as he's as he's getting to opponents like Randy Orton and Edge and Batista that are coming mm-hmm. up. Um, it, these matches get longer, so if you're no selling everything, it's going to be shit. Yeah, why? Yeah. Why would why would the audience stay, like, stay attached to the thing, like watching or whatever? They just tune out. Yeah, yeah. they wouldn't. They wouldn't be invested. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'll go and get a beer. I'll go and have a piss or whatever. Like, yeah. yeah you, you know. It. You know. You know. Taker's gonna no sell for twenty five minutes. But fuck it. I'll go for a piss and get a hot dog. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what's the point? Yeah, it's it's one of them. It is. It is. You know. He had he had to start making it look like there was a chance he'd lose, because mm. it, you know otherwise, like you say, nobody gives a shit. You know? it, it, so go on, mate. I was just saying it's it's like in sports. If you're you know any team, if you're watching the same team win over and over and over again, it becomes boring, and you can't you can't root for them. Do you know no, what I mean? You end you end up you end up supporting other teams just because you want that team to lose. Yep. Yep, absolutely. But also when you think about it as well, when you're talking about the the obviously Cake has got to sell in this match, the whole build and storyline for this match relies on that because the match is basically built is at Randy Orton going to end the streak. Yeah, you yeah. can't you can't sell that storyline if Taker doesn't sell. 
if his taker doesn't take any, if there's no near falls where takers on the receiving end, you're not going to think, oh well, the streak's in danger here. Yeah. He needs to sell. He needs to give Orton something. Otherwise, the the storyline is just a, it's just pissed up against the wall. Yeah. To be fair, this is to to me this is the match when he should have the streak should have ended. They should have hit 13 and 0. 13 is an unlucky number. Uh, you know, in superstition. Mm. And to me, this is where I think I quite I really enjoyed the Legend Killer gimmick for Randy Orton. I thought it was it made a lot of sense. Even when like he had Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase Jr. is his like entourage support whatever you want to call them, I think it fit. Just, you know, they were, they were all, you know, second generation or whatever it is, third generation, you know. It just seemed to, it, it seemed like a good stable. It seemed like it could go relatively far. And I thought, you know, he was, he's really good at playing that character. Like Randy Orton now is almost as boring as John Cena. You know what I mean? Okay, um, yeah. I've, I've seen there's, it. There's, there's, the reason, there's the reason why we call him Randy Borton. Yeah. It's been the same gimmick. This is the problem with people nowadays. They're having the same gimmick for too long. Yeah, they are. There's nothing fresh about Randy Orton. No. Right. Oh, man, but the one time they did try and make him a bit more fresh when they had him join the Wyatt family, they fucking panicked and thought, oh, no, fuck it. He just turned on him. He was playing him the whole time. All yeah. right, that was decent as well. It was good, yeah, but that was what I mean. It was a good change, and then they just thought, "Ah, oh, now fuck it." Oh, wonderful! Fucking brilliant. I mean, he's back to being boring again. Yeah, I hear voices in my head. They tell me no sell. <laughs> yeah. They tell they t- me st- stupid. They tell me another headlock, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um... Yeah, uh, where are we up to? Take it as this set up. And then starts they start getting a bit sloppy with stuff. Yeah, I noticed that they uh, ran they basically ran head on into each other at one point, which looked like a, a fucking miscommunication in the match. Mm. Um Take a lock's in a dragon sleeper and no one seems bothered. No, nope, no one fucking dead. dead. Uh da-da. Bit of a double down spot. Uh, Power slam gets a two count. And then Orton, copying Triple H, decides to go for the ten punch in the corner, which leads to the last ride. Yeah. Which gets counted. Yeah. Counted, ref bump. Second counter. Uh, Cowboy Bob runs down to use the cast. Only gets two. Yeah. Takes a boot. And as Taz mentions multiple times while he's on commentary, oh, he hit the goozle, the goozle. Ugh. Yeah, and I, I hate that put, word. And I put literally take a sit up and I put in brackets, you're fuck now. Because <laughs> you know for a fact, as soon as he sits up, that's it, it's no cell central. Yeah. Except at this point, um, Orton whips Taker towards Bob Orton, which is on the apron, but nails Bob with a big boot. So he nails... So Bob Orton's now out of the picture. Yeah. yeah. So then Taker then goes for a choke slam on Randy Orton, which is counted into the RKO. Which was cool. Which was fucking amazing. It was really cool. Really good. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did. Um, that only gets two, but I think, I think the crowd were... Ready for that as the finish. Yeah, yeah, the they, they should the have crap. been the finish. That the was um, there was, was a lot. Of, there was a meaty pop, wasn't it? There was a lot of stuff going around around that time of uh, what's his name, like on the dirt sheets and that. They say, oh yeah, Taker's going to be the one that he's going to be like he's going to lose to Orton at uh, at Mania uh, twenty twenty one, oh. and Orton's going to be the one to take the streak and stuff. Um. So I guess that's it. Suckered people in a way, but it should have been the end. 
<laughs> it would it would have been it would have been a good place because Randy Orton was still an up and comer at this point, and it would have made sense to put a future top guy over. Yeah, yeah. That's what so, I mean. At the end of this, at this point, you, I mean, you, you can carry on the feud if you wanted to. Mm. You know, like after this, do backlash and whatever. But Randy mm. Orton going over here makes Randy Orton a superstar. It does. And I'm not saying that he isn't a superstar now, mm. but this makes him John Cena level superstar, whereas now he is never going to be above what he is. This yeah. is it. But here's he the is... thing as here's the thing as well. You've got, if he had gone over here with the quality of match, because let's we I don't think we've really talked about the match and how what quality it was. The actual match was good. Oh yeah, it was I really it was, good. I think it's really good. It's... I re- I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed yeah. the build. I enjoyed. The, I really enjoyed the match. Yeah, the match had good pace to it. There was good action to it. It was a good story told. Where obviously you know, Taker could you know many a time nearly lost the streak. Yeah, it, this, it's. This was the first true time when Randy Orton hits that RKO for two. That was the first time I genuinely thought. Street could be over. Obviously, you know, I know now that it wouldn't. But when I see, I remember seeing that at the time and thinking, "It's fucking done it." Mm. Yeah. And then it was, and then you know, and it's it creates that roller coaster that I mean we've we've not really had since you know Triple H at seventeen really. Well, I was going to say it's. Um... On close because we can finish the match. The Orton goes for Tombstone. Yeah, and then it's counted into a normal like Taker's Tombstone, which yeah. goes straight to a three count. Yeah, so he he, he probably watched WrestleMania seventeen, but then must have missed the end <laughs> because it's... it's the the same finish, and he gets Taker gets to win at fourteen minutes fourteen seconds. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's funny you say that because I've got I've got my summary written down. It says, I put, I, I've put fucking great match, match at everything, and probably on par with Triple H at 17. Yeah. Made Orton look like a star and very strong. Great action and told the fantastic story of a young upstart thinking they're the next big thing, trying to take down and prove themselves it's the old guard. Loved it. I feel as well that the name being given to the Undertaker's unbeaten run that, that is now being recognised on the same level as a title. Yeah. 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 Arguably a world title. So. I'd say, yeah, it's it's coming to the point where it gets it gets seen as more important than the SmackDown world title easily. Mm. Mm. It's cer- it's certainly getting some recognition now as some of something of worth. Yeah. Um at this point, I don't know because it's possibly me thinking back and just thinking, "Oh, they've mentioned it now. It's now, now this is the point where it's actually worth it, similar to a title." Maybe back then it was like, "Oh, it's it's it's, it's a nice feather to have in your cap, maybe." But I don't know. Like I said, the significance at the time of not it's probably lost on me because I didn't watch it as it happened. But it's definitely. A notable thing now, at least. So, especially now they bring it up because it, from this point on, it, it gets brought up every year. So, yeah, it's you know it's definitely worth. It's got some some value. Yeah. So yeah, I um, I really I can say I enjoyed this match. It was full of action. Nice story told. Um, I would have to give it three and a quarter, I'd say. Three and three quarters. See, I, I've, I've, I've gone with the same score, but I, I, can I, can I do quarter caskets? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, can I bring myself to do that, or do I just give it a four because I? It's hard because I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy this version of the Undertaker as much as I did the badass version, mm. which we got at seventeen. 
Yeah, that's fair. You know, so I think that's the that's the only thing that mean that doesn't put it on par with seventeen for me. I think I just think that it was so good and it was the perfect opportunity to end it. And I, I just think I think they blew it. If I'm honest, not ending it here. I think they made a serious fuck up. It would it, it would have been like I say we would have got into it. It'd have been a logical place to drop yeah. the street because it would have put us someone over and it was at the end, it was at the been the back end of a good match. Yeah. It would have made sense. It's on the highest stage of them all. Yeah. As well. So it it, it would it would have been a good place to end it. But it would have been, you know, that would have been a very short build for us, so True, true. Um, it wasn't bad. Coxie didn't like this match. I didn't know, but I don't like Randy Orton, so um, I've I think... just always I found him boring from the start. Like, mm. yeah. I suppose that, that can happen with wrestler with certain wrestlers, though. You know, it happens to all of us. Um, it doesn't really help. It they've. It this is, it picked up a bit here, if like going from the uh, the Kane rematch to this. Uh, this is definitely a lot better, but I just didn't enjoy it as a match. Yeah. Um, and it just seemed a bit daft. Like we've had the the finish for me. Like they have the whole goes to ten points of the corner to the last ride, but then Orton counters, but then tries to go for a tombstone, which gets countered. Right. So you think he should have learnt not to go through his mo- not to go through one of the Undertaker's moves, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I can see right. that. So I'll give it a two and a half. Yeah, oh. Harsh. I think it's a bit harsh, but like I say, if you don't if you it's like if you don't like Randy Orton, then yeah, yeah, you're I not going to see why. I'm not going to see why you're not going to enjoy this match because it, at this point, Randy Orton's got his his moves are down, his moves are set. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, he's going to throw some headlocks in there. You know, <laughs> but you're going to get a nice drop kick to go with it. So, yeah. I'm a fan of uh, nice drop kicks. To say that. Uh, I will admit, his scoop slam pretty meaty. Oh yeah, yeah, the little quick power slam. Yeah, yeah. Quite like that myself. <laughs> but other than that, nothing of value. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we'll jump forward to the 2nd of April 2006. It's to Rosemont, Illinois. It's WrestleMania 22 with a casket match. It's Mark Henry versus The Undertaker. Yeah. Um, the first and only time a casket match was used at WrestleMania, which is surprising because well, it did the Taker's gimmick. Yeah. And according to my research, instead of the a, a rumoured angle taker we went to get, uh, that I think it got teased at the Rumble this year, we got this instead. Uh, yeah. Yay. They, did do, they did do taker angle a month earlier. Um, but surely they could have done this on like SmackDown or Velocity yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. The, again, we're, we're running into a big problem here in that they could have done something much better at this point in time. Like the under, like you just said, mentioned, the Undertaker Kurt Angle could have put on a fantastic match. You could have been you could have been looking at you know one of the true classics that you have to go and watch. I think yeah. you could have ended up putting on bullshit, but. I'm guessing at WrestleMania, they likely would have put on a really, really good, really entertaining match. And it would have been quite believable that Kurt Angle, being an Olympic gold medalist, could end the streak. Instead, we get this fat blamange motherfucker yeah. who immediately, you know, has no chance on this earth of ending the streak. Are I mean, you are you it, referring to Mark Henry? Generic. The network version that I watched has the super generic theme and Mark Henry a super generic singlet 
which again makes him look like a broken condom with limbs. Yeah, <laughs> he looks yeah. like he looks like he's 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 stolen Christ's gear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much that it's like he seems to be in that phase of like where WWE is like, well, we have nothing for you, but we need you because you're on a ten year contract, so we can't get rid of you. But we don't want you to sit at home and pay well, you. So we want you to be in doing some more. Yeah. Here? The, the, well, this is this is the this is the again, it's it's a throwaway match to get Taker on the card so we can say the streaks continued. Yeah. And it's evident to everybody, including Mark Henry, that there there is no way he has a chance. He doesn't even have a sliver of a chance. No. And you know, Mark Henry's had two two decent runs in his career, and they were both right at the fucking end. It yeah. took him that long to get not green and not fucking retarded. I can I can pretty much sum this this match up uh, in very few words. It's shit. No, it's pretty much the case of the, the entire match is pretty much. Smalls, uh, what's the word? Small, smalls, 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 smalls. I can't say it. Smalls, <laughs> smalls, smalls. I can't smalls. Smalls. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. So that word. Um, bit of the whole tease in the casket. Nothing happens. Henry goes for a ten punch, which gets countered. Fucking it's why? Awful. Is it? If, uh, Send punch into the world's worst loss. Last ride was a bit of something daft. Yeah, yeah. because but, literally doing that just just to do that spot, which has been done again, it's been done before. But for someone Henry size, it doesn't work. No, because the last ride he never gets anybody above what two fifty actually up. Yeah. So, but I just wanted to point out if if we were going that fast through it. <laughs> Yeah, there was nothing that really happened in the match. That's the thing. It was oh, actually. There's one point where um, Mark Henry hits the world's strongest slam and goes for a pin at WrestleMania in a casket match, you fucking moron. For fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> um, he doesn't even know so, what match he's in. The green, green grass of home. <laughs> So, take it. Take it goes for the trademark dive outside over the casket, tombstone, and Henry goes in no drama. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Other, other than taking nearly killing himself with that suicide dive, and the uh, utter idiocy of Mark Henry, this match is garbage. Yeah. I've, I'd say my summary, I put not the best street match, but it's there. It's, it's, it's akin to Burt Reynolds playing Jerry Fireball Mudflap. <laughs> I play Jerry Fireball Mudflap. It's garbage. Pure <laughs> garbage. <Yeah. laughs> yes. But I did also put it's better than Gonzalez, at least. No, it, it isn't. Um, it is, it is. There's it actually is. wrestling in this. It, is, it did make Henry look strong, but for memory, didn't really do anything for him overall in his career. As a close, as close to a throwaway match as you're gonna get for the streak. But with Gonzalez, he was at least a semi-credible flat threat because he had chloroform and he was like <laughs> a foot, he was a foot <laughs> and a foot taller. Henry comes <laughs> out. Gonzalez is an improvement because he's got chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. This guy is better because he has a rape kit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't mean it like that. Wow. It's like. Fucking. Uh, uh, the, oh, the problem... no. oh, fuck you. <laughs> the problem I have this match is Henry walks out, plain black singlet, like. Uh, Bullshit, like generic music. Not at all looking confident. Like, yeah, I'm gonna win. Yeah, like, but Gonzalez, just... Gonzalez comes out with potential date rape. Let's be honest. Yeah. 
<laughs> to cut more rats, he looks like a date rapist. But <laughs> it did come out nearly. It did come out looking naked. Let's be fair. Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh. put arse hair in his fucking costume, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> It could be worse, they could have put a Pringles can there. <laughs> just 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 salt, just stuck it on with duct tape. So um Yeah, Taker gets the win in nine twenty six. That was nine minutes. Nine minutes twenty six. Oh, that was painful. Yeah. It was painful. Yeah. It's got just for the fact it had something slightly unique in it, I gave it an extra half a point. But even that, that was like 1.25. I gave it one star for the pure hilarity of Mark Henry trying to pin someone in a casket match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Half. So you did score it better than Gonzalez. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> I'm not, five and a half stars. <laughs> God, could you imagine the star rate? Could you imagine the, the casket rating for this match if uh, if he came out with some rehypnol? Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, it'd be an instant five star classic. <laughs> Jesus! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, there, there was this match was crap. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, you know, having the rehypno just yourself and passing out is more entertaining than that match. Yeah. Well, again, if sort of in comparison to the last couple of matches, you had eight, you had a train big show which was shit, and fucking uh, Kane two, Kane two, yeah, followed by Orton, which is like the whole legend killer versus legend for the streak to this. So three out of four matches have been fucking garbage. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is oh. it. This is what the struggle is. It's it's like when they have an idea of what they want to do at WrestleMania, when they have an idea for a decent story, the matches come out on the other end are great. When they fucking get to no mercy two weeks out from WrestleMania... And they go, shit, Taker's not got a match. Um, you, you face to Taker for the streak. Mm. We get shit like it, this. You say we're very lucky Yoshi Tatsu wasn't around at this point. <clears throat> <laughs> well, that, but that's, that's it. That Mark Henry is that caliber of opponent. Mark Henry is no threat to anybody other than May Young. At all in his career, yeah. Well, no, but that's it. You know what I mean? He's oh, done been, nothing could, in his it, career. Nothing. It, it could have been worse. Let's be fair. It could have been fucking Bobby Lashley. Yeah, but no. <laughs> I know what you mean, uh, but you know, okay, Bobby Lashley is a milky bro. Yeah, but Mark Henry is. A brew where the tea bag is split, and you now can't drink your brew because it's fucking ruined. <laughs> True. You know I mean? he, he he was a very good brew when he was sexual chocolate. At least he was entertaining. Well, yeah, yeah but he was entertaining as comedy relief. Yeah, but this better this better than what came out for to fight Taker. Oh yeah, well yeah. Well, you know. Why? So, Why? I think we spoke about this match longer than the actual match. Probably. Yeah, so let's move on. <laughs> uh, we're going to take you down to the 1st of April 2007 to Detroit, Michigan for WrestleMania 23 for the world title. It's Batista versus The Undertaker. With Teddy Long announcing them coming to the ring. And doing a fucking oh. awful job at Exactly. First, Why? First of all, the reason this match happens is because Taker enters the Rumble at 30, wins it, and then picks Batista as his opponent. 
But then, apparently, Batista's not intimidated by Taker. He's prepared to go toe to toe with the man himself. So, is this yeah. as a result of the, being the Royal Rumble winner then? Yeah. And essentially, following okay on with that. From, essentially following on from Sid not being afraid of the dark. <laughs> it, I'm okay with that. That's fine. I, I, he won the Rumble. Great. Yeah. Yep. What we I also don't... need, what we also need to remember as well is apparently 82 percent of the fans picked Taker to win. Yeah, 82 percent of the fans picked Taker to win. But Batista gets saliva for his entrance, which mm. is quite cool. Uh, and then um, if, JBL saliva, on... if saliva weren't shit, that'd be cool. Well. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. They did some okay stuff. But then I just put out what JBL said on commentary. This match could be ugly. And I've just wrote, foreshadowing much? <laughs> hmm. I, don't, I, don't say, I actually don't think the back, Matt, this match was that bad. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying... Uh, <laughs> To to, uh, to to sell me on watching this match, you're telling me it could be... That doesn't sell it to me. You know what I mean? No, tell, I tell me I'm going to watch a five-star classic. Tell no, me this could, be a, this could be a slobber knocker, or this could be a classic, or this could be really hard-hitting. Don't tell me it's ugly. Ugly is yeah. not a nice word. Use you, you, Ugly's, uh, uh, you know... How can I put it? Negative. Ugly, ugly, yeah, ugly's a negative. Give me, give me a positive sounding word for the match, which could 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 have the same meaning, but it's positive. Intense. Yeah, it could be intense. It could be hard hitting. It yeah. could be, you know, it could be a even a, a, to an extent a brawl. Yeah, both men are not leaving the same. Yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, I get what you mean. All things that would have been better than telling me uh, ugly, because you say ugly, I think shit. You think Great Carly's about to have a match? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, we've got um, Batista comes out first, obviously with the belt, and has a face reaction. Mm, champ out first. Yeah, champ out first because you know Taker's coming out with a longer entrance. It makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, um, Taker's going to take forever to get out. So, yeah. and then Taker has a. Um, an exorcist sort of like inspired entrance, which was sort of cool. Didn't notice that one. No, I can't say I noticed that. I, it's like the you know, like little doorway in the background and coming from the light sort of thing. Oh, you mean sort of like Poltergeist? Oh, Poltergeist, sorry, I'm getting my references yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that movie. <laughs> don't yeah. go into the light. Yeah, so it's, there was that sort of visual, which was cool. Uh, well, I've got opening bell sounds. Batista from his double legs him straight away. Yeah. Just yeah. Pisses, pisses take her off. <clears throat> um, yeah. I've noticed quite early that Batista's trying to play the heel. It seemed, though he got a face reaction on his way out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he does kind of work the heel, doesn't he? Yeah. In this match. I think um, it's the only way he could have really gone, though, with it been Taker. Yeah. Like, because yeah. the... It's that thing with Taker, isn't it? It's like he would have had to do a lot or nothing to get over... Well, not even nothing. He would have had to do something to get over as a heel. But the fact that he, he won it the rumble. Like, yeah, it kind of makes you a face, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to say um, Undertaker's doing his usual fucking bumping around like a fucking bouncy ball again. Um, but this time he does what I call the um, the Foley spot off the steps. Oh, the... Oh, the, knee, the, the, knees. the knee, knee first, the knees. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, straight through the steps. Yeah, sick now. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun. It looked sore. Yeah, there's a reason why Foley can barely walk. <laughs> there's probably a reason why Undertaker can barely walk. Well, yeah, that's true. So, 
This is probably part of it. Yeah, it, it just don't do knees into metal structures. They're not designed for that. No. Mm. You know? Just, yeah, it's... You could do that spot without going near at the steps. You could, you know, you can go over the top and maybe just connect with your hand and just make like a slap noise sort of thing as you go over. Well, yeah, yeah. There are, not, there are nicer ways to do it. I I don't like the whole where they turn their back into it. I get that you try and protect yourself a bit, but it looks too, it does look too forced, which is kind of why Mick Foley came up with the, you know, you just get, if you get whipped into it, you get whipped into it type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You take it on the knees because you would. What you could also do though, you could sell it the fact that you put your hands down to protect your knees and you slap it, keep your knees away from it. And it still looks like you've gone into it with that part of the body. It's just that your hand's taking the brunt rather than your your knee. Yeah, there's there's there's, a, there's an argument to be made with for like even that point. Why why if somebody whips you at it, yeah, why wouldn't you try and not so much stop yourself but dive into it a bit more and take it out with your shoulder rather than your knees? Mm. Or you could slide tackle it. Yeah, and go with feet first. Yeah. There's different ways that can counter it rather than just go, just smashing off your knees and go, oh, well. Yeah. I didn't like walking anyway. <laughs> um, I say, so, Batista pulls out some top rope moves in this match, which is quite surprising. He's and I pulling, yeah, out, some, pulling out shot, the shots a little bit. And for, some re- for some reason, I've put in my notes, the crowd ejaculates when he does it. There's <laughs> a bit of a pop. Yeah, he gets a shoulder block for two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Taker hits a boot, but Batista pretty much just tells him to fuck off and kills him with a clothesline. Yep. Uh, oh, this is where Taker is. This, this is a bit where Taker does the fighting up from his knees with the punches spot. Yeah, the, bit that the you best love. pure striker in the WWE. Fuck off. <laughs> it's the yeah, whole that, che- no, that, cheering that... and booing with each punch in it, like the cheering yeah. Taker booing yeah. Batista. So it's what makes um, me. Cr- Sorry, mate. What makes me cringe with that is, do they forget about Steve Blackman? Well, that, <laughs> Dan Severin. This is it. You've had and some. Like, you know, well, Butterbean for that. There you go. Well, I mean, you've had you've had some pro- actual fighters come through the WWE. Ken fucking Shamrock. Ken fucking Shamrock. Fuck's sake. You know, Dan Severin was better than Ken Shamrock was. Mm. But you know. And you're calling him the best pure striker. He's not. And the whole like punching from your knees, he can not generate any fucking power doing that. He'd get absolutely battered. And then when he does them like them really, really, really quick punches up. Like, <laughs> oh. It looks like a street fighter finishing move. That's how realistically it is. Yeah. It's <laughs> just shit. As as Taz would Taz would say, as he has a, a wank into an orange sock, take her <laughs> take her with those them soup bones. Yeah, oh, yeah. I tell you what, the only person who has more worked punches than fucking Taker is Shane McMahon. He's the only one whose punches look fucking worse. Doing the skipping and ah, oh! yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, so Taker takes control. Uh, big foot, leg drop, or well, that's a two count. Yeah. Uh, follows up with old school, but Batista then facts out of a choke slam. Uh, yeah. goes for the leaping clothesline, but I don't know what happened. Whether they they butted heads or something, I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, that was a bit of a botch. It didn't look right either way. Yeah. Um. Take so it Batista. Wrong. Taker in control, Batista into the steps, uh, leg drop, and the uh, usual suicide dive. Yeah. This time it doesn't lead, it just leads to more like boring brawling. Brawling, 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 power slam on the announce table. Uh, Refs just seems to have lost control because it just, fuck it. Yeah. Giving up counting. <laughs> Um, back in again, Batista makes the same mistake everyone's made. 
Like he's no different. Goes for ten punches, gets reversed. Because he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's two, though. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's. It, Batista was pretty bro- blown up by this point. He'd slowed down quite considerably. <laughs> Suck, <laughs> sucking wind, for sure. <laughs> um, Brock Lesnar style. Yeah. So he's kicked out the last ride at two. Spine buster. Take a sit up. Choke slam for two. Tombstone reversed, Spear, Batista bomb, two, second Batista bomb, reversed, Power Slam, reversed, Tombstone three. Yeah. Well, you're forgetting Batista goes for his own Tombstone again. Yeah. Oh, God. I've, uh, yeah. Which, which gets countered and gets take of the win at 15-17. No, it's not because the length of time wasn't too bad on that match. I mean, it didn't feel it felt it felt about the time. You know, you feel like say you watch a five minute match and it felt like ten. Yeah, it actually felt its time. The match itself wasn't that bad. I quite enjoyed this match. I yeah, but it was better it was better than I expected coming into it. That's for sure. I'm not a Batista fan, but I did enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Um... And so, like I say, I've written little things say decent match, plenty of action, was very 50 50 for most of the match. Crowd was great, popping for everything and turning on Batista. Enjoyed this match. As Cole says, this is only the second time that Taker had a little match, a title match at Mania, which shows how big a match Taker was at this point, and it didn't need a title for the match to feel epic at Mania if Taker was in it. The, the problem for me with this match, and Someone like Batista should have really been, as he always say, like watching the tapes. I can do it. Where's that? There we go. Watching the tapes. Quotation fingers, lads. Yeah. And so he should have not done the ten the ten punches to avoid the the counting to the last ride. Should have not gone for the tombstone, which has been counted by however many people now yeah. during the course of the streak. These are things that they should be picking up on, and especially the. Agents and writers, whoever does it, putting put it together, just be going, Yeah, okay, you've got to go do this, but it's been done previously, so yeah, don't do it. Do it either don't do it or do it better. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it becomes more noticeable when you're looking at it like this, you know, because we are looking at the street specifically, you're seeing the same things happen WrestleMania after WrestleMania, mm. you know, every time somebody's going for goes for a tombstone. It gets reversed. Yeah. It's not happening. And even as a storyline point of view, if you want to do that way, you just watch the rest of Evolution over the years get nailed by this. Why would he do the same as that? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. If he's, you know, if you're talking about like the Evolution links, okay, Flair didn't try and tombstone him. I'm not shocked by that. Randy Orton did. Triple H did. You're telling me he's not going and watch those matches and sin the fact that, oh, well, every time they've gone for a tombstone, it's been reversed and they've got pinned straight yeah. away after. You know, how about don't do that because there's a chance it's going to get reversed and I'll get pinned. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be logic. Yeah. But despite that, I... I I mean, I've put better than expected. Genuinely didn't mind it. Felt entertained despite the terrible commentary. And I felt like it was a legitimate challenge to the streak, to be honest. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're forgetting it was it Cole and JBL on commentary. Ugh, drizzling shits. Yeah. Just... In fact, I don't mind Michael Cole. I, 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 I'm one of the few people in the world who does. I think he's okay. I much preferred heel Cole. He was fantastic. But JBL's garbage. For me, it's... I enjoyed this match. Um, it... I've lost my train of thought now. I'm going with this. You enjoyed it? Were you going to score it? I wasn't going to score I was going to follow up on something what you just said then. But I can't remember what it was. Uh... I had a brain, brain fart. I spoke about shit commentary. No, before that. JBL being a wanker. No, before that. Though it's true. Mm. Be- better than expected. Felt entertained. 
legit challenge to the street. That was it. Um, yeah, I don't think it was a legit challenge to the street because if anything, this would seem to be more about the belt being on the line and uh, going off his previous, uh, like when he won the belt at Menu Eleven, was it? When he took on Sid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, 11 or 13, no, 13, I think. Well, they did mention the streak in the promo. 13, 13. Yeah. 13, there we go. Yeah, they did mention the streak um, in the promo, so it was sort of like about the, the streak as well, because it said they put this thing, they always build it as like streak versus streak, like is... One of the we said one of these are going to die. It's going to die tonight. It's going to be the Undertaker's streak, or the Batista's like streak with the belt. Is the way they almost worded it. So it's you know what the streak was mentioned, but it was like passe. In it this would match. have been, it would probably would have been more credible to me than Mark Henry. Yeah, I agree. Um, but. At the same time, it for me the believability wasn't was if I'd got into this not knowing who was going to win, who'd won already. I yeah, I don't really put it on Batista anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. Like it, you, to be fair, I mean you could you could look at it if they're not going to put it on Randy Orton, who was like you know the youngest of the of that group. You know, mm. that evolution group and seem to have the biggest rocket strapped to his back. Yeah. They're not going to put it on Batista, you know, what the WrestleMania after. Mm. Oh, a couple of WrestleManias after. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, by God, we had to get that Mark Henry match in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, right in. Three. Three caskets. I'll go three point five. I will also go three and a half. Yeah, it was all right because it was out of all the stream matches, it's probably up there. Mm. Definitely top ten. Oh, easily top ten. Yeah, easily. You, you, the way this is going, you're gonna have things that are rated one casket in there. <laughs> Fair <laughs> point. So we're coming to a, almost sort of coming to a conclusion in a way. What I think of the street, but I think we should end it. We'll end that. We'll keep hold of that. I think there, for there, now. there's still there's a there's still a fair number of matches to get through in this. Yeah, street, to be honest, and some of the better ones to get through. Yeah, this is it. No spoilers um, there, guys. It's... <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump forward then to our ne- our next match and the final match on this uh, part of the streak. It's. Uh, the 30th of March 2008 in Orlando, Florida. The Rated R Superstar. That wrestler is. Well, should I say, I'm sorry, I love you? It's WrestleMania 24. The Undertaker versus Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. yeah. So, we got a promo to begin with this saying, showcasing Taker's streak, and now Edge is going to break the streak any way he can as he's an opportunist. Well, well, yeah. Yeah, let's see. I thought the promo package was good. There was just one thing that I would point out in the promo package. Um, Edge like, is doing like the voiceover, and it says, I see the impossible and succeed. The video shows him big boot in Funaki. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, w- well... <laughs> it, just, it just, to me, it was just like, yeah, I see the impossible and succeed. Booting Funaki. Brilliant. Yeah, that's not impossible <laughs> at all. Absolutely not. <laughs> Is it? But also, yeah, what I um, mentioned out in this promo as well is that Edge was also undefeated at Mania at this point. Yeah. So it's a street versus street match, and officially billed as. Which I didn't well, quite like. Pretty much just to backtrack a bit, um, Taker got this match by winning an elimination chamber at No Way Out. Mm. Um, two weeks later, uh, well, on an episode of, Sm- of uh, SmackDown, Edge predicted he would beat Taker at Mania. 
Two weeks later, he takes on Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder in a handicap match, but loses. Um, Undertaker interferes following week. Um, leads to some stuff with Vicky Guerrero, announcing a burial of the Undertaker. And the Undertaker's wrestling in your streak. Um, however, during the burial, Taker emerged from the casket in the ring, attacks Edge, Hawkins, and Ryder, uh, chokes Simon Edge through the casket, leading yeah. to this match. And that'll be the closest Edge and Zach, Edge, not Zach, yeah, Zach Ryder and Kurt Hawkins get to the main event of WrestleMania. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Ryder did win the US title, maybe. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt and Jerkin. Well, he won still, a belt. Still won. Mm. He won a belt. He won a belt, I suppose. He lost to the next night. Uh, but... <laughs> and uh, Taker comes out first this time. I was going to say one other thing before the entrances. We had. I don't know if you guys had it, but I had Kim Kardashian show up. Yes, she did. Uh, I I literally wrote, Kim Kardashian, fuck off and die. Um, <laughs> this is I not, what I wrote. <laughs> I, I, I had not started writing my notes at this point, but yes, I, I echo your sentiments. <laughs> um, so yeah, Edge comes out last, strangely. Um, Champ. Champ should always be second. Yeah. That they should. Of course, the high pin, the fact that neither man's been pinned at Mania. Um, I noticed Edge also looked really confident in his entrance. He did. He actually looked confident and focused, unlike past competitors. Yeah. I've got Edge, Edge comes out as standard. As, as well, Taker comes out looking a little bit ministry. Just yeah. a little bit, a little bit of the ministry sort of hint to there, but then I thought Edge comes out as sad and brings out Vicky Guerrero <laughs> being pushed out by um, Teddy, Teddy Long. Long, and then she basically get Lacey Evans back to the book back. So, yeah, well, that, I actually quite liked Edge in this match because his his character work and stuff played off really well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that both the entrances were really long. I did notice that. Like, yeah, I Edge. Edge's theme loops like three or four times. Yeah. yeah it took so. forever to get to the ring. I think the commentators tried to play it up as like him playing mind games with Taker because normally, like, Taker's the one with the big long entrance and it's like, oh, you know, it's dead eerie and, you know, you get a bit nervous and, you know, you see this big guy coming down to the ring and, like, like Cox was saying, it plays up with Edge's confidence. He's thinking, well, you know what? He's going to try and play this game with me. Fuck it. I'm going to do it to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I'm the big deal here. You know, I'm the champ. I'm undefeated at WrestleMania just like he is. So what do I have to worry about? You know, why, why, why should I be afraid of this guy? Well, is it, uh, like you say, he's also undefeated. So yeah. why, should, why should that change now? Yeah. So. Um, but I've also put Cole and Jonathan Coachman on comms. Oh. Dot dot dot. Oh fuck. Coachman, <laughs> Coachman annoyed the living piss out of me. Mm. You see, this is one one thing I am quite glad I'm good at in wrestling. I can ignore the commentary if I want to, and just oh, I wish pay I could any attention done. to it. I wish I, I could literally done. switch off commentary. I wish if I could. I... Have... I wish I could have, because he ended up with belters like Cole saying every year Taker adds more and more to his repertoire. Does he really, Michael Cole? <laughs> he, he he's constantly evolving his moveset, isn't he? I heard this year he's going to put, he's going to put a Phoenix splash into his match this year if he has one. <laughs> you fucking twat. Yeah. Oh dear. Cole is the drizzling shit. I'm sorry. Heal Michael Cole was brilliant. Bring back the coal mine. No, but this this time the thing is though at this point we're getting clueless Michael fucking Cole. Yeah. But it's, it doesn't help. I mean Cole's good when he has somebody that he can like play off a little bit. But like Coachman is shit. Coachman's always been shit. Why do you think he only lasted a couple of months on Raw? <laughs> recently? Well, yeah. 
yeah. to be replaced by bleeding um, someone who arguably even worse. Oh, Renee Young. Yeah, she's the drizzling shit. I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, Coachman was no good on this. He was pissing me off at points. So there was a couple of points I did pick up on some stuff he's done commentary, and it just sort of slipped it left, left my memory. But it was. Uh, it was either something really daft or something really like you noticed it, but then it was like that sort of you're being reminded of noticing it, or like yeah. you should be, you, like you should be noticing it, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's reminding yeah. you of all the shit that you should have noticed. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, if it was worth, if it was noteworthy, we would have spotted it first time. So, but yeah, um, what we got? We've got an old school counted by Edge, but then take a roll through to an arm drag, which I thought was quite impressive. Yeah, that that was quite good because that to me shows that take that would say to me Taker has like watched previous matches because normally mm. old school always gets coward, yeah. always. Mm. But this time he's kind of it's like he knew that was going to happen. It was quite good. I thought that was all right. Like lowering him in. Yeah. And then Taker rolls outside and Edge basically doing anything he can to keep him outside. Mm. Like baseball slides, stuff like that. And he does one bit. He does a neck breaker. So while Taker's on the apron and Edge is in the ring, he like does like a swinging neck breaker but onto the ropes. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I've put weird net breaker by Edge over yeah. the top rope while Taker is on the apron. Not sure if I liked it or not. Yeah, I have literally wrote, not sure how to feel about that. Because um, <laughs> Taker lands on his feet, doesn't he? In Yeah, kind of. He sort of like lands on his ass on the apron. Yeah. But it was like, I don't know if that was good or just shit. Now, considering mm. I've never seen anybody do it ever again, I'm assuming they thought it looked shit. It did look shit in hindsight because it's obviously you want the effect of a net break. And someone's like, "Oh shit, my neck!" You land on your back. It doesn't look good when you you know you think, "Right, I've got a really sore neck. Let's walk it off." Yeah, but again, like, yeah, I I, I understand that. But if you like, if you land with your neck on the rope, so it kind of like tweaks your neck, doesn't it? Like whip you know I mean? your head, yeah, yeah. That so uh, you know, I was trying to I was trying to figure this out in my head, like. It probably would hurt. Would it hurt as much as a regular net breaker? I don't know. But I can see Edge's thought process for doing it. Yeah, you may as well try it out. It's not going to hurt otherwise. You know, it's not going it, to hurt you, is it? So Yeah. I mean, considering it, you know, it's not like a big move in the match. It's not that important. But it was just, it was just something a bit different. And, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you know, maybe maybe he's tried it at a couple of house shows to see what the reaction was like or whatever, or see if people thought, that, oh, yeah, it looks all right. Why not break it out now? I mean, it's it's the biggest match of his career, really. Well, so, uh, you know, you're going to pull out all the stops. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but like I said, I'm, 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 un- I'm unsure. Uh, so, Taker goes for his... Well, the first big spot of the match really does the signature to dive. Oh, that's after he's dumped Edge off the top rope to the outside. Yeah. Yeah. That looked a sick bump for Edge, by the way. <laughs> he f- proper fuds against that floor. I was looking through my nose to see if I could spot that. <laughs> um, Edge but drops on the second of the guardrail and gets him back inside. Starts trying to wear him down with like a single leg crab. <clears throat> no, I, I will note though, with the single leg crab shit. I'll come on to that. But the the move onto the bar, the move outside. Mm. Um, well, dropped it, Taker dropped into the front row. Yeah, where Taker dropped into the front row. That little, the the little, well, I call it a backdrop. I assume they call it a back suplex or something now. But I thought that was quite nice. That was quite tasty because Taker started to sell the lower back. Yeah. When he come back in, and that move was specifically targeting his lower back, which is also stopping him from doing the last ride and the tombstone and 
I thought that that was quite nice. It was good psychology that. And it, it, know, it, 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 fit, it fits in with the ultimate opportunist gimmick as well. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was quite nice. I did quite enjoy that. Yeah, it is good. That's good storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Well, it fits with the gimmick for Edge, really. I think, doesn't it? He just he's he's trying to be the one in control of the match yeah. rather than Taker. So it's trying to work like stop him from doing the old do the choke slam or the old school or last ride by working down the back like people should be really be doing. Yeah, is like that or the knees, the legs, whatever is like key of Taker really. Mm. Yeah, they always say you know you take the big man down, you know. Is in your mm. is in your is in your area. You take away his his advantage. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the single leg crab. I just thought it looked terrible. Yeah, they never look good. The single leg anything. No, it just it, it like oh, I won't mind. But part way through, like almost immediately, he kind of bails on the whole like being sat over like the full Boston crab and moves to. Driving his knee into Taker's back, which mm. I get, but you're relieving the pressure that you're trying to build up on his yeah. back by doing that. So that it just looked like I don't know whether it was like a bad decision to use that move. You know, like if he'd gone for like a normal Boston Crab, maybe, or you know, if you if you have to stick a rest hold in there, which is what I'm assuming they decided to do. You know, I would have picked something a little bit more suiting the the two guys that are in the ring. You know what I'm, I mean? I'm guessing that was partially probably done just to... He works it to a single leg play just for what happens next, which is when take a counters. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So... Yeah, take a counters into a pin for two. And then I don't know what the fuck he was trying to do after that, though. I've literally put then some kind of leg triangle. What? It didn't make any sense that because he tries to recounter, he counters the counter into like another submission, but I couldn't tell you what the fuck it was supposed to be. Fuck knows. Uh, snake eyes, followed by Edge hitting a drop kick. Yeah, Goes for a take- choke slam. Yep. So Taker goes for the big boot on the sequence, but obviously Edge mm. counters it with, like I say, with the drop count, goes for a two count, which Coachman then sells Edge being like the ultimate opportunist by saying that he has Taker scouted, pointing out that normally how Taker normally follows Snake Eyes with a big boot. Yeah. So obviously it follows on to the, to the point we made before about Taker scouting people, countering the, you know, the, the uh, old school. Mm. So which means yeah. it's obviously he's pointing out that they're both scouted each other. Yeah, yeah. So I did quite this. It's the only positive I've got from Coachman. Don't, don't get me wrong. We're back to our regular shitting on Coachman service right now. But, <laughs> but yeah. No, but I've, I've, I know I've, what you mean because. Go on. I was going to say, I've not managed to pick up any commentary because uh, just Coachman balls the piss out of me on commentary. Yeah, it's one so, of those. It, it's. You know, I say if you if you can sometimes if you can block out commentary, like especially if it's Coachman, or if it's like, like, fucking um, Byron Saxton, he's one. David Otunga, he needs ignoring. You know what I mean? There's there's certain commentators who you just need to ignore. Yeah, because they they make a match worse rather than enhancing it. They distract you from it. Um. I mean, Lawler, to me, I fucking can't stand Lawler. But, <laughs> but you get you got the good you got some good commentators at the minute as well, though. You know, you've got um, um, Mauro Ranello. Ranello's good, but he's yeah. on NXT. He's different. It's true. And you, you've also got Malfuck Tom as well. So, please tell me you know what Malfuck Tom is. I have no idea. Well, fuck Tom. He's Tom Phillips on SmackDown. All right. Okay. He, wa- he wants a textile woman on a plane and got found out about it. And then he basically um, told this woman to uh, that he, he wanted to, um, to fuck her mouth. All right. Okay. Hence, mouth fuck Tom. 
I remember that coming out, but I don't. Yeah. Remember, I can't recall the guy. He's a he's he's a lead he's a lead commentator on SmackDown. Oh right. He is now. So and then Corey Graves, who was good, is now just infuriating now. <laughs> but yeah, so Edge count yeah, Snake Eyes went for the big boot. Edge counted with a drop kick, and then Edge gets caught coming off the top rope. Take a go to the choke slam. Edge counters it twice. And the second time he counters it into a DDT for the two count. So I thought again it was it was, you know, building the psychology that, you know, Edge has got you scouted. Edge is you know, he knows what he's doing. This is why he was so confident. Yeah. You know, he, he's he's got it all figured out. You know, Undertaker's been doing the same thing for over a decade. You're gonna you're gonna get found out eventually. Do you know what I mean? And it made it it made Edge seem even more legitimate the more times he counted stuff. It was like Yeah, he, he could do he is gonna do this. He's you know, he's he's got it he's got it made almost. Do yeah, it's I mean? to the point he's the most credible threat because he knows exactly what Taker's going to do. Yeah, yeah. So and also, well, sp- speaking of uh, f- things that have been done again, Edge, g- Edge goes for the 10 corner punches, but gets counted into the last ride. Shock horror. So, oh, well, 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 you- you've done him a disservice here because you get the DDT for the two count for Edge, but then oh, yeah, Taker, a choke gets a choke slam f- Taker gets a choke slam for two, then goes for old school, which gets counted again. Edge then hits a superplex for two. Last ride, counted into a neck breaker for two. Then he actually gets hit with the last ride for two. So he's counted one already. So, you know, don't do a disservice here. Because then Taker goes for a tombstone and he counters that into the, what I believe was the edge o Yeah, they never mentioned the name of uh, it on commentary, did they? But it was like the edge or something like or the educator or something. The educator was the submission. There was the edgematic, which I think is this. There was the execution, which was like the impaler DDT type thing. And then there were... But, uh, so I think I'm right, but I'm not sure. <laughs> the edgematic was the pullback. Yeah, yeah. Move. That's what it does, because he gets him up for the tombstone and he flips over the top and dra- takes his head with him. But then he had the... The DDT started off as the buzz killer, which then became. It was briefly, I'm sure it was briefly the execution. Yeah, yeah. And then got renamed to the. Uh, something else. And when he started doing the submission, they first called it the figure four edge lock. And then that became. Ew. That became. The that became the ed- educator, yeah. So ah, sounds like a shit Pokemon. What? <laughs> Your educator is evolving. It's now the education. <laughs> but no, there's a big boot. They both go for like a double big boot here, and it's kind of botched. From what I remember. Um. Or oh, this is from what I've got written down. And we get another old school attempt, which finally connects. Yeah. Uh, and Taker kills the ref. Uh, I haven't written down why he killed the ref. I don't know if he just kills the ref. I think, it, I think it's, it's just. A, it runs into him. I think it's just in a, it not probably meant to be a ref bump, but just, yeah, ref gets killed. Yeah, it's manslaughter. Yeah. It's, man, uh, it's manslaughter. Ref death. This one, because it wasn't intended. <laughs> Drive by ref death. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's an edge hit some form of a DDT. Um, no, but edge chat shit's caught in the throat, but edge nails are low below. Yeah, he gets goozled. Yeah. Goozled. Yep, smashed in the dick. Fucking, <laughs> fucking goozled. Yeah. <laughs> Bugger, Bugger Red gets goozled. Yeah. The Edge um, then grabs a camera and redoes a spot that he did in the Elimination Chamber for continuity. Uh, 
Survivor Series, actually. Or Survivor Series. But mm-hmm. yes, it's... it's it, I, I don't mind that. Yeah, I, I like it. Camera. I thought it was quite good. I quite like that. It's, um, it's, doing, it's the ultimate opportunity. Opportunity is doing something that worked previously, which yeah. makes sense. Well, you say he does something previously that works for him, but then the next bit doesn't. Mm. Well, the, you mean the... You see that you got a, the next thing that happens is the ref falls out the ring. So the referee's <laughs> the referee's supposed to be unconscious, literally slips out of the ring. Yeah, and the commentary is like, "Oh, he he he, he must know where he is. He just fell out of the ring. It's unconscious. Like, it, you know, you wait, know what happens when ref when ref, refs die. There's still some. There is some electronic sort of signals that still go off in the brain. And sometimes you may think they're alive, but they're just twitching. And this is what has happened. It's like Devon selling is what you're telling me. Yeah, he's, he's got, yeah, he's having, he's having a spasm. He's got the yeah. Devon leg twitch. Yeah. <laughs> he's just fucked him out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Edge goes for the tombstone. Dumbass. And it gets yeah. countered for two. Yeah. After little Nate. Little nature, little, little nature oh, hold on, of the room. Hold on. He you've was set, fucked. You've got, to, you've got to set this up properly. Out comes nature. <laughs> Nature's still running to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Taker looks on. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he's still not getting any closer. <laughs> Finally runs in. One, two, kick out. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've written down Little Nature runs the ring like the opening scene from Cool Runnings. <laughs> well, this is that bit from Holy Grail does less camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fact is, he nearly falls when he's running as well. Oh, that's amazing. Falls and knocks Brilliant. himself out. Falls and knocks himself out. <laughs> uh, uh... <laughs> The thing is, being a ref, he would have had to sell it like he'd just been clotheslined or something, and like just be totally done. <laughs> so, um, out, out come the edge heads. Took yeah. out of a choke slam. We, in a spot that I didn't really like, because if one of them's getting on the apron, surely both of them are going to get on the apron. You know what I mean? It, it was like mean... he was clearly stood waiting for the other guy to get choke slammed into him. It just means that I'm going to hit takers just there going, I'll hit a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Yeah. It just, yeah. Yeah, he should have just picked up fucking Ryder by his ankles and just used him as a club. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been more, that would have been interesting. Yeah. But then uh, Spear by Edge for two. Spear again. And then he gets counted into the Hell's Gate. Which was a new move. Which was new and shit. Yeah. I hate submissions that have no legitimacy. But yeah, he's just having a nap on his leg. Yeah. Well, apparently, at the end of this match, obviously, obviously, we get the submission here. Edge has blood running out of his mouth, and it keyfabe the Hell's Gate did internal damage, and everyone bled from the mouth after getting nailed by it. At this moment in time, it, it, obviously they got rid of the blood. But at this moment in time, when it was introducing it, they put, tried to put it over by the fact that it gave you internal bleeding somehow. <laughs> it, well, they, if I remember when he first started doing it, when they called it by its proper name, like the is it the Oma Platter or the Gogo Gogo Platter or whatever it's called? Gogo. Yeah, it's the Gogo Platter. platter. Uh, the problem with the the problem is, is he's supposed to have hold of his own foot to close and it. And he doesn't. No, because he wraps his own leg over his own foot, which pulls his foot and shin, which is what he's choking the guy with, away from his throat. <laughs> so there's, there's, no, there's literally... What, the, what they're trying to say is the take has got hold of the back of his head and is pulling his throat onto his shin. Mm. Yeah, that's that's the idea. But you can easily slip your head out of that. You have hair. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is slippy. So, which is why you would normally grab your foot and then pin your elbow to your knee. 
Mm. So mm. why would a choke give you internal bleeding? It wouldn't. <laughs> it's a choke. Like... But it's, uh, I was going to say, they, they went from calling it the, the uh, go-go, go-go platter, and they went from being, I think it was the Devil's Triangle. And then they went from being the Devil's That's Triangle. Just... Devil's, Into... Tri- the Devil's Triangle just sounds like a way, another name for a for a for a for a for a, for a foo-foo. Well, it was it, it was it was the Devil's uh, Triangle. It was Taz or Coach or one of them like calling it on the time, possibly JBL on SmackDown or whoever whoever was doing commentary. Like um, they saw a take a take going for the Devil's Triangle, and then the other one chiming going, "Oh, it's that Go Go Platter." But like, there's, no, you can't say that. Cause it's MMA. Where we're separate from UFC, so we don't we can't say that. It has to be the Devil's Triangle, and then change it to Hell's Gate because it went all PG. Otherwise known as Michelle McCool. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Devil's Triangle, Michelle McCool. So, I like it. But so, yeah, yeah, no. It, uh, the thing well, is. No, I was just gonna say, right, if you if that's what you if that's what you want to do, just do a triangle. Mm. Just do a triangle choke. So at the end of the day, I've had I've been in a triangle choke that created that much pressure in my head that it caused me to have a nosebleed. Yeah. So you want to stay, you know? Oh well, everybody has like bleeding from you know the Hell's Gate. Just do a triangle and put blood coming out the nose caused by the pressure. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that puts pressure on your carotid arteries, mm. yeah, which is why, you, which is why, on numerous occasions, I've gone unconscious in triangles. Yeah, but that would make more that that makes more sense. It's safe to do. It's legit looking than doing this fucking stupid thing. Yeah, and you could it could and it has the same, exactly the same effect, but it's legitimate and it looks. Better. It looks legitimate. So that's what pisses me off about the Hell's Gate because you pick something that you can't even make look right. It's like the whole oh he broke his arm with the Kamora. No, he's not even got anywhere close to that even being on, and you can clearly see it. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. I no, agree. even untrained people can clearly see. No, that's bullshit. But it's more the fact that they make it seem as if um, with that, it's like it makes it seem as if they, they've got it as if like Brock can choose when he's going to break their arm. Yeah. Which yeah. is just fucking stupid. Yeah, because there is no... It's not that easy. <laughs> so... But, yeah, I just... It pisses me off. So I'm just, I hate that move. I fucking hate it. Like it just looks like someone's having a sleep on the leg. I, yeah, you know, not for me. You ruined the match for me, if I'm honest. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I've I've put a closing statement saying, really good match. The story told of Edge having done his homework and knowing what Taker was going to do next was told fantastically. It had a vibe that Edge could win at any time. The action picked up brilliantly, coming to a brilliant and natural crescendo. It also made Edge look like a star with Taker needing every finishing move in his arsenal to bring Edge down. Yeah. So, and I, over... I, go on, mate. No, no, no. It's, it, go on, I'll let you finish. I'm, I'm done. Go on. I was just going to say, I mean, I, I agree. I enjoyed the story told. I, I enjoyed the beginning of the match. I enjoyed the middle of the match. Fucking hate at the end. This match would be ten times better if Edge goes for a tombstone and gets counted, and then there's a free count. Yeah. I didn't need to. See, I didn't need Hawkins and Ryder coming out. They added nothing. I didn't need the Hell's Gate because it adds nothing. And to be honest, I didn't need the added like. The, the I understand like why you did the ref bump, but I don't think it again I, and I, it, it allowed Edge to do the camera shot. But you know, little nature runs out 
fine. Even if you did the two, even if you still did the two there after that tombstone, yeah, have Edge set, you know, and then he picks him back up. You know, Edge, I don't know, either goes for a low blow or, you know, hits some kind of quick counter, goes for a, goes for his finish, and then gets counted into another tombstone. Yeah? Something like that. Uh, you know, I just think that I didn't need, I didn't need Hawkins and Ryder. I didn't need the Hell's Gate. It would have been a nice, for another, for a tombstone finish, and it, I think both men would have come out looking better than they did, having all this faff right at the end. It just it made it became too complicated. It was too much. It was the match between Taker and Edge was great, and I just wanted more of that. I didn't need garnish. It's, it's like when you get a burger and then they stick a side salad on it. Oh, I'm not going to eat the fucking side salad. I'm going to eat my burger. I'm going to eat my chips. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Maybe that's just me. I just, I, I, I just felt, I felt like I didn't need it. That's fair. Can I hear you, Coxie? You are muted. Coxie's got a mute. I put myself on mute because you were talking. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the fucking, it was a bit. Sort of almost like an overbooked finish. Yeah, apart, uh, it, apart it, from the finish, yeah. It, yeah. It didn't need all the bullshit toward the end. Like, yeah, I've have the referee run out, have him kick out, or whatever, and repeat the tombstone or last ride or whatever. But just finish is pointless. The sub, well, the submission is pointless. Like, just stop doing it. Yeah. Like, think about this way. This is the first submission victory in the street. Yeah. But <laughs> did that did that make it seem more legitimate? No. No, no, not at all. It'd have been better doing the frigging dragon sleeper if he was going for a submission victory. Yeah, at least he's got a history with that. <laughs> that's it. That's some like I, the the. Again, the argument's going to be is because it's pulled it, he's pulled it out as like a brand new or kind of like a brand new move that Edgewater scouted it. But by this point in the match, it don't it, it doesn't matter. We're that far in, we're that deep in. You know, Edge could be you could you can play as Edge is running on empty. You know, mm. and he just he can't find that one last counter, which would have been so much better because that could feed into then Edge's psyche going forward that. You know, I was this close. You know, I, I, rather than like all these, like they did it. They did it when they started doing like, oh, it's take a Triple H again this year, and take a Triple H again this year, and Triple H. They're like, I was this close. This time we'll do it in Hell in a Cell or whatever. No, Triple H. You never felt like you were close. You never felt like you were going to win. Mm. This could have played it you could have played into it because Edge did feel like he was close to winning. Edge did feel like he was on top and he was in control. Yeah. And that could that could have built a, another story arc for another twelve months to get him mm. back to this point and face and take her again mm. at WrestleMania because he was this close to ending the streak. And that one time when he didn't have the energy to counter, he got beat. Yeah. I just think that would have told a brilliant story for and you told a fantastic story in this match and you got another 12 months of it being brilliant yeah you know, and as as we've seen in the past long builds lead to fucking great payoffs yes they do when they do it right fucking brilliant payoffs so when they put the effort in yeah yeah and you, you can't tell me that edge ain't gonna put the effort in because that guy was fucking dedicated to this absolutely you know, Say what you want, but he fucking loved wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> and Taker does too, so... There you go. Well, uh, Taker gets the win via submission in 23.49. Well, it yeah. felt about his time. Yeah, it's, but it, it, it felt about his time, but it was... It was, it, in, it was uh, good. 
it, yeah, it was really good, except for that last, like, probably three minutes. It was excellent. Mm. Yeah, it really I agree. was. So out of ratings, I've given it four out of five. It yeah, I'll give it a four. See, I've given it a three purely because of that finish. I think if 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 we'd stopped it, like I'd said, this would have easily been a four, if not higher, for me. I did. I did. I I, I mean, I'm not an Edge fan, but I came out of this thinking, yeah, I I, I get it now. I never understood why he, people fawned over him and thought he was, you know, I did, I never yeah. even understood why he was main event. You, you, to me, you sound like here. Uh, you sound like Frank, and it's always sunny on season thirteen. Well, with uh, Matt, where he's like the whole gay thing, and then uh, Frank's like, I don't get it. Then spoiler alert: the whole bit at the end, like the five minute like ballet sequence, so, I get it. I finally get it. <laughs> like that's that's you. That's you and Edge at this point in time. Like you've just watched that match. You. I get it. I found the get edge. <laughs> yeah, but that, genuinely, that's how I feel. That's how I felt after watching this match. Like, I genuinely was, I mean, I was sat there and, you know, I'm sat on the couch feeling sorry for myself. I've been sick. And I'm like, fucking hell, yeah, that's it. That That's the whole, and now everything Edge did makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Because... Up until this point, and up until seeing that match, I just thought, he's, he's a bit shit, isn't he, really? You know, he was in the main event because, well, John Cena doesn't really have anybody else to feud with. Oh, okay, then. But now it's like, ah, <laughs> I, yeah, that's why. That yeah. is why he was in the main event. That's why, out of Edge and Christian, he became the fucking one who did something. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. That 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 was the match that did that for me. So yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and that was the last time take a thought for the belt at Mania. Yeah, he doesn't need it. No, nope. like I say at this point the street became more than the belt, so Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Oh God! Have we got rate? Uh, 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 are we doing ratings for the whole for the whole lot for the for the six? For the whole six, it's a two out of five. Yeah, I got to a two as well. I did it mathematically and got a two. <laughs> There's a lot of it's, it's a very like I said at the beginning of the episode. It's a very mixed bag. You've got some absolutely brilliant matches. You also got some utter shite in there as well. This free D. The thing is, it's improving if you look at it. Like Overall, last time, last, last time we all, we had like a couple of decent matches. You know, for you know the first set, you had one match that you would say was even passable, and now you've had, and then you've had like two. Now you've got three decent matches. You know, it, it it's 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 weird that almost the older he's got the more matches we're seeing that almost because he's thinking, you know, I've got to go a bit more balls to the wall here. Each time he's kind of stepping it up a little bit. So uh, I'm, it's quite good. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't disagree with that. You know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of shit in the streak, but there's so, there are some, there's some little gems in there as well. Yeah, I agree. Definitely some gems. Especially what we're heading towards now. Yeah, that's true. But no spoilers. Yes, we'll cover those in week four of the road to WrestleMania. All right, last six matches. Yay. (laughs) Now, the, the next four should be no spoilers, but they should be a lot more enjoyable. And we'll say no more. Indeed. So that's going to wrap it up for part three of the 2019 Road to WrestleMania covering The Streak. Uh, before we go, give yourself some plugs, boys. Do you want to go first, Uncle? Yeah. 
Um, if you've enjoyed listening to my voice as much as I enjoy listening to my voice, you can hear me on the Gunpowder Treason No Plot podcast, available on all good pods. Crap, Blah. damn it! Available on all good podcast providers. That's Coxie putting me off because I see him on my computer screen. The bastard. And you can follow them on Twitter at Treason No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! You can also hear me on the um, on Random Ass Discussion RAD Live. You can find us on Twitter at UK RAD Podcast. You can find us in all the good podcast catching places such as Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, and many other good places. We're on Facebook as well. It doesn't get updated very much, but we're on there. Um, and you can also follow uh, Steve the Betrayer on. Um, on Twitter at Steve GTNP, where he, um, yeah, he still doesn't like many people. <laughs> he's plotting and he's waiting and he's laughing a lot at this moment in time. Well, there we go. So, uh, of course, you can find a lost art of wrestling on uh, Facebook. You can find us on Twitter at LAOW Podcast. Uh, you can find us on all good podcast providers, including iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and all the like. Uh, give us a like, give us a follow, subscribe, leave a review, all that shit. Throw so, uh, money. Throw money at us, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's about it. So for the last start of wrestling, I've been Coxie. I've been Billy the Boy Bunkle. And I've been TFG. And this is the podcast where we ask, Who better than Canyon? Oh, God. <laughs> oh. I'm Bunk- fucking knackered. Bunk- Bunkle's lost sound or something. Have I? No, you were like tapping your ear. I thought you lost sound. I thought it kind of went like when when you were doing the um, I've been Coxy and you've been listening. I just got a. I was like, "What the fuck have I done?" All right, I just did the whole. I just did the whole. You who better than Canyon? Oops. So hopefully that comes across. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, I'm sure. I'm sure you I'd, can cut it and put it in.